statistically, I should probably be in jail, a drug addict or dead. Reaching over to my coworker and I was like, who is that? And he said, don't even think about it. That's the <laughs> boss's daughter. <laughs> Investing is really the key. Is it is making your money work even while you're sleeping. You're no longer trading your time for money. Mm -hmm. The judge told me that I was going to go to prison for 10 years or I could go and do this program for two years. I mean, my life changed. The most valuable piece of real estate you could ever own is the six inches between your ears and it's your brain. This is our home. These are our relationships. These are our people like we are going to be this way. And I want to be a coconut tree. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it's like, we're not going Rooted. We're not going nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm ready to run through this wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> Delina Mai Kako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by flipping homes instead of the bird. I'm your host, Kamaka, and I am super stoked for this episode. But before we introduce our guests, I got to remind you to check out keepitaloha.com to buy some KIA merch. Use code KEEPITALOHA to get 10% off. And don't forget to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash kamakadias to become a part of our Patreon Ohana for as little as $3 a month. You can get exclusive behind the scenes content and listen to the uncut episodes of this podcast before they are even released to the public. If supporting us with money is not for you, but you still love listening, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I read every single review and to prove it, I want to share this review from BRN and Raised 808, Born and Raised 808. They said, Mahalo plenty from Seattle. So good to hear the locals talking stories and laughing. I can't wait to see who your next guests are going to be. Stay Pono. Mahalo so much. Born and raised 808. Keep it aloha and keep it Pono. All right, let's introduce our guests. What if we told you the next three times you fill your tank, you could save money? Well, at Texco in Hawaii, it's true. You can get $1 off per gallon on your next three visits when you download the Texco app and join Texco Rewards. Earn points on every fuel transaction and qualifying in-store purchases at participating Texco stations. Download the app and join to get started today. Visit TexcoHawaii.com for details. Our guests today are two house experts from the island of Oahu. Our first guest is a design expert who is also a licensed mental health counselor by trade and was the CEO of the nonprofit Kokua Support Services, where she continues to serve on its board of directors. She hosts HGTV's new show, Renovation Aloha, with her husband, who is our other guest today. He is a full-time real estate developer and part-time landscape photographer. In their show, he identifies and acquires rundown properties with potential on the island of Oahu and his better half oversees the home renovations and designs. Together, they search for the perfect families to move into their new home. In addition to all of this, they also have a podcast, Deals and Aloha, and a YouTube channel where they highlight other investors and business owners and educate others on how to invest in real estate. They also hold a free monthly meetup where they break down their latest projects and a quarterly speaker series as well. This husband and wife duo have two children and are inspiring the next generations of locals one flip at a time. I am so stoked to talk stories with them today. Their names are Kamohai and Tristan Kalama. Aloha Kamohai and Tristan, welcome to the Keep It Law podcast. How are you both doing? Thank you. That Super was, good. That was an unreal. I know. <laughs> I the like, best by far. <laughs> yeah. It was I was like, wow, that was so impressive. All I was doing was reading what you've done in life, <laughs> yeah. you know? So if you think that's impressive, pat yourself on the back. I appreciate it. Yeah, but thank you for having us. We're yeah, we're honored to be here. Stoked to be here. Yeah, I'm super stoked to meet you in person. I've been seeing your stuff online. And uh, I think I might have seen you, seen you two in person once, like just at some event yeah. and be like, oh, they look familiar. I think I, I saw you at the Sony At the Sony Open. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. yeah. Like, I swear to God, yeah. I saw you there. Yeah, 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 I remember talking and you're easy to see because you're so tall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, these people look familiar. And then I would see you on social media and then uh, this happened so quickly was my uh, sister. I was in Hilo. Yeah. Uh, for Mary Monarch Week and my sister's like, you gotta get these people on. <laughs> and she would text me and my family always suggests people to me. Yeah. I'm like, guys, leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, have such I, a I long feel you, story. bro. I feel you. <laughs> so you should get this person on. You should get this person on. But yeah. then when they said you two, uh, um, I, I checked out the clips and then yeah. I saw the show. I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. And nice. I, 
I haven't finished the the series yet. I mm-hmm. just watched the first episode. Mm-hmm. The other day. It's so good. Thank right you. On. I was hooked from like the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I watched it right before bed with my girlfriend. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, we loved it. We're like, <laughs> right oh yeah, on. we used to love watching these, you know, mm-hmm. and they're like, move that bus. Like, yeah. <laughs> shows. yeah. And uh, there's a bunch of other ones, but it's yeah. so cool to see a local version of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With locals. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, that first episode was probably the worst house that we've oh, ever it's gnarly. Not ever probably. Done. It's the worst house. Yeah. And yeah. probably will always be the worst house <laughs> we'll ever do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm surprised how amazing it turned out. It's so nice. Thank you. Like, yeah. I, I even love the animation when you're like formulating ideas yeah. and it's like moving. It's and, impressive yeah. that they can do that because they just catch us in the mode, right? When yeah. I'm explaining it. And it's hard if you're not on in the shell of the mm-hmm. house to understand but they capture it and i'm like yep nailed it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and then the finished product i mean you guys are so talented oh thank you that's all you it's yeah. a it's a labor of love i mean literal blood sweat and tears goes into <laughs> every house and it's ironic now that we're on hgtv because tv was never on the vision board it was never mm-hmm. something that we even aspired to do mm-hmm. um but what i always did aspire to do when we first got into real estate investing six years ago was like bring that hgtv design to hawaii because mm-hmm. a lot of people weren't doing it and i feel like local people deserve to have these custom one-of-a-kind homes you know mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i think the the most surprising thing was uh sh- us actually seeing what it takes to buy a property and how expensive it is oh, yeah? in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. It was like 600000 for like that, that. tear down. up house. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Yeah. like yeah. literally all the value, uh, tons of value in Hawaii is in the land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's different than on the mainland where most of your value is in your house, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know? So even though the house is a total tear down, still 675 grand yeah. it's crazy, crazy. Yeah. yeah 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 i was like um you know i've been saying like ah, i think i'm gonna uh, start um looking to buy next year mm-hmm. i'm like okay, i'm starting to make a decent amount of money and then i saw it i'm like it's gonna take me a lot that, more years that, than yeah. I thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well the cool thing is and i think we'll get into it there's like different kinds of ways yeah. you know what i mean to get into housing so mm-hmm. Um, you talked to one of our good friends, Fuzzy, mm-hmm. on the podcast, and I absolutely love that episode. He's such a good guy. Yeah. And he kind of went into some of the things, but a lot of things that people just don't know right now. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're stoked to talk about it. Yeah. Well, we achieve home ownership the very unconventional way because when we you know, got into investing, it was like, we were $80,000 in debt. We just had our two children. And it was like, all we wanted was home ownership and stability in Kailua, where we're born and raised. And it was like, how the heck are we going to do this? But we flipped our way into home ownership. And, um, you know, a lot of, I don't recommend that for everybody, mm-hmm. but there's just more than one way. Mm-hmm. And I also think that It's about starting small too and working your way up into whatever that dream home looks like because we have so much equity here Mm -hmm. and appreciation here in this market. It's unlike no other. Obviously, it's Mm -hmm. special to us. And so, um, yeah, just like changing how you think about it, I think will unlock a whole new world of opportunity too. Well, yeah, I'm excited to get into all of that. I think the number one thing I learned from Fuzzy is the, the number one route so you can become successful and get into real estate is always buy the lifted Yoda and go chain, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. I heard that part. That's yeah, the right. key always right there. Yeah. Always 100%. Before, before anything else. And yeah, the 12 sure. pack kind of can. Okay. So, see, that's why I'm not <laughs> successful yet. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we'll get to know our guest right now and we'll start ladies first. Okay. Where are you from? Where are you grad? And what was it like growing up? So I born and raised Kailua. I graduated from Kaleho High School. And growing up, I, oh geez, like, where do I even start, Mm -hmm. right? Growing up, um, I'm from a household of entrepreneurs. So it's all I knew. Um, Both my mom and dad, they ran a business together. So ironic, I run a business with Mm -hmm. my husband. I think it just came naturally. And very blessed, I think they uh, ingrained in me hard work. And they always made me feel like... I could achieve anything I set out to do. And I hope that my dream and goal is to be able to make my children feel like that. Um, But it wasn't without its hardship. I mean, um, 
I think that's why I went naturally. My first career was in mental health and substance abuse because I did experience that in my childhood. Um, I did have, you know, family with substance abuse issues and incarceration. And statistically, I should probably be in jail or a drug addict mm -hmm. or dead. Um, so I'm proof that you can use whatever trauma you go through and, and take it to a different place mm -hmm. if you choose. Um, but I had loving grandparents. Um, yeah. And overall, I just feel really blessed because a lot of the things I went through as a child, most people don't come back from. And I think because of our spirituality as a family and our love for one another, we were able to come out from that mm -hmm. stronger and together. And I think it's just equipped me into being who I am today. Awesome. I love yeah. that you broke that cycle. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I, I think that everyone has that choice mm -hmm. to do that. Um, but yeah, we can get into more of that. That's part of my life hack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What kind of things were you into growing up? I was a gymnast. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, so I was, so yeah, oh, yeah, the whole thing. I competed. Oh, um, you can just troll you up then, yeah? Yeah. 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 You can. <laughs> I was a gymnast. So like I didn't do any other sports or anything like that, but gymnastics. And I did it for a long time. But then um, I remember telling my, my parents, I was like, guys, I want to, my body was broken already. Like I broke my back Oof. at a super young age and like competitive gymnastics is not for the mm -hmm. faint of heart. Um, and so I was like, guys, my body is broken and I'm not even in high school yet. Mm -hmm. And I want boobs. I was like, I want <laughs> Oh yeah, you gotta wear a tight <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I want boobs, you guys. And if I keep going, I'm gonna stunt myself and I'm just gonna be this like muscular little small person. You know, I'm 4'11". So yeah. Um, yeah, I ended up stopping. And then I think I just jumped into academics, but I was Kolohe when I was in high school. I, I was, I was, academics came super easy to me, but I think that's why I probably smoked way too much weed mm -hmm. during my time in high school <laughs> and was a truant through mm -hmm. and through. I remember I have an older brother and so he would he would help me out when I would ditch school and he would like answer the phone at home. Yeah, when, when the school call. would call, <laughs> he would delete he would delete the message and so shout out Trav, thanks wow. for that. But I still graduated with honors so like school came easy to mm -hmm. me and so I went straight into college straight out of high school and then straight into my master's degree so I graduated with a master's in counseling psych. Um, because both my parents were in the field. They were in counseling in any capacity and so it just came natural i think when mm -hmm. you go through what what we went through at a young age that is like and then you have family that is in the field it just i just went it was mm -hmm. like no other option um but then i met this guy and mm -hmm. then we had our children and we were struggling like mm -hmm. the nonprofit world is amazing um but I felt like I was missing, we were missing a piece to this puzzle. And I, I had all the other pieces and I'm like, but what goes here? How do I unlock a new thing? Because I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. And I remember being on the couch with my, um, my son that we just had at the time. And I was like, a commercial came on for a real estate seminar. And I was like, I, something just said, you need to go. Mm -hmm. And so we went and I was like, you're coming with me. You don't have a choice. We're going. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest is kind of history wow. from there. Yeah. Cool. And we'll, I guess we'll learn more of your side and we'll yep. get into that. Yeah. But um, your story of high school reminded me of this movie called Perfect Score. Do you remember that? Kind it's of. It's like maybe in the 2000s it came out. But it was this, uh, I bring it up because there's this Asian kid. But the, the goal or the the plot of the movie was they're trying to get a perfect SAT score. Uh, mm. uh. And uh, had this Asian guy who was this total stoner, smoked so much weed, <laughs> but he was Super the smartest smart. guy. Super so he would, he would like take it uh, yeah. for everybody yeah. or like they'd have to sneak in and like sit a scores or something. But that's what it reminded me of. I like, take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're like that Asian guy. <laughs> that's yeah. so funny. That Classic. is funny. But what about you? Because I, I know you have like a million uh relatives yeah. all over Ireland. yeah all over the place <laughs> um but i grew up in kailua i grad from kamehameha and it's funny because we both grew up in kailua but we never nice. met each other until way later really? in life what's yeah. the age difference and that's probably why oh, okay. it is yeah nine years yeah, okay nine years yes. yeah so we're a different generation but both of our families have roots in kailua mm -hmm. um man my childhood was 
was awesome. I mean, I just remember, so grew up across the street from Kailua Beach. Uh, it was a small, like two bedroom plantation style home. And my parents were renting, um, but just playing on the beach, being a local kid, you know what I mean? Uh, but I think the best blessing that I had was I had like a front row view to like the best story in history. Uh, I, I say it is. And that was my dad's story, you know, and I think his story played a pivotal um, role into what we are today and how we got here today um, because we grew up at the time. I didn't know that we didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't think as a kid, you really know that because my parents were so good at providing every, everything we needed, you know, mm -hmm. but now I look back, I'm like, Oh, we couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. We, we couldn't go on that trip. Oh, I couldn't go on that school field trip, you know? Um, and so, my dad had 11 brothers and sisters. That's why I have cool. so many cousins, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> big Hawaiian family. That's pretty common back then. Yeah. Um, but he was the first person in his family. He was the first person in his family to really like do something with his life. Um, and I don't want to see that kind of sounds bad. Like my other I, aunties I know, and uncles did it. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but he was the first one that graduated from college uh, he saw the value in education and he just wanted something more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so he, um, went to, went to school, graduated, came home, got a job as a teller at first line bank. That was his first job. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he quickly got into the management program and worked his way up to the executive senior vice president of first line bank, and then went on to do a lot of other things. But I say that to say when I was growing up, I got to see that all happen. You know, we went from uh, a family that was struggling, living in that house. And then we went to Kailua Arms. If anyone knows Kailua, you know, Kailua Arms was the ghetto of Kailua. Um, but I saw my dad buy his first house, uh, which was crazy because nobody was able to do that in his family, you know. Um, and so I got to see that whole progression kind of go, um, which was cool. Now, I wish I heeded that advice and mm -hmm. like looked and, and actually followed that same path. And, you know, we're here where we are today now, but it took me like a long road to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was always pretty good in school, but my junior, senior year, uh, I started I was very kolohe too, um, <laughs> but going out, partying, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I ended up graduating from Kamehameha, went to a small Christian school in Northern California called Simpson Bible College. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was in Redding. So if anyone knows where Redding <laughs> is, it's like inland, not by the ocean. I never knew what I was getting into, uh, but... I ended up getting homesick, coming back home after two years, kind of just searching, bro. Like I, I, I had no passion. I had no purpose. Mm -hmm. I was just like doing whatever I could. I was working at a skate shop. I got a job in the labor union, um, but I was partying a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and I started hanging out with the wrong crowd. It took me down a very dark road. And I remember I can still look back now. It was like probably the most pivotal part of my life. I was sitting in standing in front of a judge and the judge told me that i was gonna go to prison for 10 years or i could go and do this program for two years and i would get no prison time so i i made that choice i went to this two-year program and i mean my life changed mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. that was then um uh, and then i I actually got involved with my brother who had started a retail store uh, in San Diego. It was called Aloha Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we ended up opening up two more stores. So I was down here. We opened a store in Kailua. Mm -hmm. And then we opened another store in Alamoana Shopping Center. We changed the name to Aloha Beach Club. And we did that for almost 11 years. Oh, wow. And okay. that... Yeah got really hard. Brick and mortar is like a super hard industry. Like it was, it was a passion and it was fun and we were able to pay the employees, but we weren't, 
cutting it here. Like mm-hmm. if we wanted to thrive in Hawaii and stay home. And at that time I got married and we had our first kid. Uh, we had to figure something out. And that's what she talks about when she, she saw the commercial. It's funny because it's the same commercial fuzzy saw. Oh, um, really? It's yeah. the exact same program wow. that we went through, yeah. which is really, really cool. But she had to drag me kicking and screaming <laughs> because I thought it was a scam, bro. Like they were up there telling mm-hmm. people that you can buy houses in Hawaii, um, all cash with none of your own money. And I was like, bro, it's so expensive here. There's no way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm glad I went because I, during that weekend, it was three days, something got unlocked in my brain. Like there was something that, and I know what it was. I actually saw a, a local brada up on stage. His name is Courtney Taguchi. I'll shout him out. He's, he's unreal, but he had been doing real estate for almost seven mm-hmm. years at that point. And he was, he told me it was possible. Wow. And he was living proof. Yeah. yeah. And that's literally all I needed to go down that rabbit hole. And that's how it all took off. Yeah, That's so amazing because it just goes back to the representation we always talk about on the podcast. And the reason why I want to have people like you on is because there's going to be younger kids yeah. or even like other adults that see you too. Like, wow, look at this local couple yeah. buying houses, thriving in Hawaii. We, How come we can't do that? You know? Yeah, exactly. So it, it's so important to see that representation, the cultural representation. And, I, um, I agree. 100%. Props to the both of you for, you know, breaking cycles in the family and deciding to go on this path and trailblazing Mm -hmm. in your families that's super awesome so you guys got into the the real estate together were you still doing your other jobs or did you both quit everything else and went and went into this full time i was uh doing the nonprofit for a couple years and juggling both um that's my first love i think the passion for helping people will never go away and so i i still serve on the board and my best friend that i met in um our master's program she runs it the day-to-day now and then we just have lunch meetings and she Mm -hmm. vents to me and i'm like yes let's do this (laughs) Uh, the the end goal is to merge the two together and figure out that piece with real estate and the nonprofit. but yeah i juggled both for a couple years you went all in from yeah. the, from the gate. Wow. Yeah, um, was just I, funny because you didn't even want to. Right, yeah, exactly. right. <laughs> but it was crazy because I, prior to like jumping in full time, uh, when we closed the shops down, I was like, dude, I got to figure out what I'm gonna do. So, first thought is go back to school and get my degree. So I went back to UH mm-hmm. Manoa mm-hmm. and I and I graduated with a degree in political science. And my track was gonna be, you know what, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. my dad had been, mm-hmm. uh, had gone to law school. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, yeah, let's go try to be a lawyer. So I was getting ready to take my LSAT after I graduated. And that's when the, the program came out. And so it was, it was just super funny how it all worked just out. Flipped you know? our whole world, totally upside down. Flipped <laughs> the world upside down. But once that got unlocked in my head and I figured out that it was possible, I, I just went all in mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of been my personality in good ways and bad <laughs> ways, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's like a superpower, but it also can be very detrimental if mm-hmm. I take it down that other path. But yeah, it was full time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like an, almost like an addictive personality, like a mm-hmm. binge exactly. eater, but like, that's, I mean, I'm similar in, the, yeah. in that way too. Yeah. Like yeah. if I get into something and I really love it. I just go into it a hundred percent. And even this podcast, like it's funny because I didn't want to do the podcast and my partners forced me to do it. <laughs> oh, no, right. And now look, I'm hey, doing yeah, this full yeah, time. Right? No, it's so it's, it's crazy. How you, sometimes you just need somebody to, to you know, push you, you pull you, yes. drag you, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that, that's a really cool story. Um, so you, you, you're both doing that, Decided you decided to go into it full time. You're still doing that as well. Mm-hmm. And then now are you doing it full time? Full time. Okay. Yeah. For the past six years, full time. Yeah. Nice. And, and what, what gave you the confidence to go into that full time? Um, I felt I wasn't, I felt just too scattered where I wasn't able to give either one mm. my full attention and I knew what was possible here. And I had built the nonprofit into a very well-oiled machine. At that point, I had been doing it for five years. And I think my 
I had the conversation with my partner, my best friend, and I was like, I think I need to spend my time here. I feel like I'm being called to give this my all. And um, I think it's once we had proof of concept too, Mm -hmm. like we had a few projects under our belt and and we had a couple mess ups under our belt. And I was like, okay, I think I know what we're doing. And like, let's double down on that, that it was like, all right, it's I can leave that because I still had stability. It was still it was stability for our family. It was the W-2 income. And a lot of people are like, oh, burn the bridge and just go all in into Mm -hmm. real estate. And that's not everyone's path. And it shouldn't be, you know, I feel like if you want something, you can do both and, but you do have to sacrifice and, and figure out how you can allocate your time. And that might take, you know, not doing X, Y, and Z for a period of time, which is what we did. I mean, Mm -hmm. I was, I was doing both for a while. I remember just being at Kukua, also juggling Mm -hmm. that, still taking contractor phone calls, running at lunch, running after work. Um, But yeah, it was proof once we had proof of concept and then I, and my, my got the blessing from my partner that I was going to step away. Awesome. Yeah. Real estate is so intimidating. It is. I hear about it all the time and I've talked to people in the real estate industry and I still don't know if I'd ever get into it just because I feel like it's a lot of work, even though I know it's like, that's the way to create generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for somebody like me who is intimidated, maybe I don't want to get into it in the level that you two are fuzzies at um, those other people. Like what's the simplest way to just get involved? Man, there's so many different ways. Is it just buying properties and just like renting out or... I mean, ultimately holding on to the asset, holding on to the home long term is how you create that generational wealth. But there's so many ways, you know, you can you can join a syndication, which is a you know, big pool of money that invests and you get payouts, dividends or whatever you want to call it over a period of time. Or you can be a private money lender where it's a relationship based. And let's say, you know, you have a friend that does what we do and you can grow your money passively. I think the key to really creating wealth is putting your money to work. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that they're any money that they create, if they just stockpile it in a savings account, that they're going to be okay. But the the that's the opposite because inflation. Mm-hmm. And if you have a if you're sitting money in a savings account that is growing at maybe point zero zero one percent, or you're even literally if it, losing money, mm-hmm. or even a CD, even you know banks have higher interest rate savings that you can do. Some I've even heard are like four percent, mm-hmm. but it's like. What is inflation? It's close to seven, eight percent, right? So you your money has to be making that or more in order to hedge that and stay mm. ahead of the game. So it's finding and in, investing is really the key. Is it is making your money work even while you're sleeping, so okay. that you're no longer trading your time for money. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, sorry, real quick, oh, go for it. So do you, so do you also have like other investments like stocks? crypto like are you guys just all real estate we're all real estate estate. yeah we're all real estate we we just believe so much in real estate and we're also proponents of like making sure an expert in what you're doing you know what i mean or you're partnering with Mm -hmm. an expert in what they're what they're doing so yeah i think um for us the real estate has always been the vehicle that we're gonna go down but i just the thing with real estate is it you have to get educated about what it is. I think that's the most daunting thing because I was the same way yeah. with uh, with you. Yeah, it's a very intimidating thing. And especially here in Hawaii with the, dollar the amount. crazy it's high scary. price points, yeah. you know. Um, but that being said, there are other ways or other places that you can also invest in real estate. Mm-hmm. You know, I we're just firm believers in a, a hard, an asset, like something tangible that mm-hmm. you can touch uh, I know a lot of people that do very well in all of those other things, crypto, um, the stock market. And for us, it's just real estate. We can kind of we can predict, you know, um, to a certain degree mm-hmm. what is going to happen. And we know that over a long enough period of time, it always goes up. Right. So I think the key to answer your question is really getting educated and it starts in here. The most valuable piece of real estate you could ever own is the six inches between your ears and it's your brain. Um, what you what you believe is true 
becomes your reality. So if you think real estate is scary and it's not going to work out, it absolutely is true. It is scary and it's not going to work out. But if you work really hard on emotional intelligence and being interconnected with your mind and having a positive outlook on things and believing that you can do something, then you can. So I think it, A, it starts there. And we had to train ourselves. We still have to train ourselves. It's a never ending like, oh, I cured that part of me. I'm good. Um, we have to, we had to start there and like understanding why we wanted to get into something. So like the best exercise we ever did was in the second mentorship. And it was actually just like a business mentorship was this the seven layers of why. So, you know, he asked us, well, why do you want to get into real estate? Why do you want to do this? And it was like, oh, well, we need money. And that's a lot. That's majority of the time when you ask someone why they got into real estate was because they wanted money. And that's okay. You need money to survive. But then ask yourself, well, why do you need money? And I was like, oh, well, I, I want to live a certain lifestyle. And it's like, okay, well, why that lifestyle? And you just keep going layers mm -hmm. and layers and layers deep. And usually around the seventh layer, you get to really what's making you tick. And for me, it was like, well, I want that security. And why do I want security? It's because I want to create impact. Because if I create impact and I have security, I can teach other people how to do it. Um, but that was game changing. And so like, you have to kind of start not even in the subject matter. You have to start within yourself mm -hmm. and go then outward. And then once you figure that out, then it's laying a firm foundation in education. So we're huge proponents, like he said, Always have been, of yeah. education. So we're never not learning. And what you put into your mind is exactly what you're going to get out. And it's the same with the people that you surround yourself with too. Um, so, I mean, first we've done what? Five, six, Lots. seven, Lots of you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's not even going to stop. Like mm -hmm. it'll continue to grow because I don't ever want to know everything. If I know everything, then I'm dead. You mm -hmm. know, like I never want to stop learning because there's always going to be someone reaching down to help pull me up because they have knowledge that I don't. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. I think too, just to, just to know, we're talking about real estate right now, but the seven layers of why is for wherever you are right now. Yeah. I love you know that. what I mean? I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. It's like, sick. Like, 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 it's so good. I think a lot of times, I mean, everything you need is within you, mm -hmm. right? Like the key to growing, the key to success is all within you, but you got to figure out who you are. You know what I mean? And so, Yes, we picked real estate, but let's transfer that to wherever you are, whatever job you're at this right now. This podcast, this you know, podcast, whatever it is. right? You know, um, a side hustle you want to start. There has to be a strong enough reason for you to want to do that, and you need to know clearly what that is if you want something to to grow and also be sustainable. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Because life is hard. You yeah. know what I mean. That if you don't know where you're rooted and why you're doing something, then you're going to be like a leaf blown in the mm -hmm. wind. And I want to be a coconut tree. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Where it's like, we're not going, Rooted. No, we're not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I can see the, the counselor background. Oh, yeah. I'm ready to run through this <laughs> wall right now. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I want to start doing that exercise with people. Just it's, asking them. It's so why. good, dude. I've, yeah. I got to start thinking. It's I mean, I, I obviously therapeutic. like, I'm like you in, in the podcast realm and the media world where I know this is what I want to do. I know mm -hmm. like, yeah. I'm I'm in the right spot, but I want. Can we can we do the the why exercise right now? Yeah, just like a little sample. Can you can you ask me something? Yeah. Is it just about the podcast or, or just, just something? Mm -hmm. Well, if you ask the podcast, I'm just gonna say for the clout. So <laughs> that's an easy one. Yeah. That's a, well, all why I care the about. Clout? Yeah. No, we can totally go into <laughs> why the clout. <laughs> no, no. He's like, no, no. no. Let's yes. not do that one. I can put my counselor hat back on at any time. It could be it could be anything. <laughs> I mean the podcast is like I, I talk about like, you know, I love connecting people and like sharing yeah. stories and community. Yeah. I'm community driven. So um, maybe maybe some some random. I mean, thing. I'll just ask you like why are you interested in real estate? Um because I want to create generational wealth. Why do you want to create generational wealth? To take care of my family. Why is taking care of your family important to you? Mm, because it makes me feel good. Why is it important for you to feel good? Um, mm, yeah, this is getting... Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it makes you really <laughs> uh, think. Because I just want to... When I'm gone, I want my family to know like, oh, Kamaka 
created this good life for us yeah. and helped us and left a, a good mark mm. on the world and our family. So legacy. 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 Mm. Yeah. yeah. So if you have legacy, then what? Why is legacy significant? How can you say I'm so like local? <laughs> yeah. She's just a local girl. She yeah. is what? very, very <laughs> I don't know. You see the neck. I'm just talking stories. I love that. I was like, uh, you just went from counselor to auntie. I was like, oh. I've never been called auntie before. I'm only 33. Oh, that's the, we just talked about it with Auntie Megs on the other episode. That's like the ultimate sign of respect. I know. Yeah, it's the ultimate sign of respect. We were literally with one of your aunties, but she was like, why are you calling me auntie? We're not, I'm not even that much older than you. I'm like, cause you're auntie. You're like. <laughs> well, that's, that's when I first got called. Uncle. That was, a, that was a called. whole thing. But I realized very quickly, like, bro, that's sick. I am. A yeah, I, I, know. Know. I, I, I know. I know. No, I was just saying, cause you like stood up and you, you're, you're I was getting in the mode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see how it makes you sit with yeah. yourself and then it, it makes you really think and think and think and you can just unlock new levels of, yeah. of who you are, why you are, you know what I mean? But it yeah. also forces you to get really clear with what that is. And you deep with I mean? yourself. Yes. Yeah, you like you gotta, said. You got to think yourself, yeah. when you're mm -hmm. actually getting asked I know. those questions. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we often just like throw out an answer um, because it's the first thing that pops into our head and then yeah. we leave it at that. It's yeah, or enough. maybe use uh, humor as a defense or mechanism. Humor or as as a time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But really digging into what is behind it and what drives that and why does it drive that um it it will without a shadow of a doubt help propel you forward in whatever it is you do yeah yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna be honest i think that's one of the best things i've learned on the podcast ever. Wow. Like no that's way. Seven. i think that's I love that. super good i'm gonna really i'm gonna start incorporating that with like yeah a lot of well shout out to steve rosenberg yeah. because he taught us that and it's stuck with me like since i heard it the first yeah. time and like it's it's also cool to reevaluate because it'll change mm -hmm. right as you progress and whatever you know it, as entrepreneurs we're the worst dude because mm -hmm. we'll constantly move the goalposts yeah and a lot of times we don't celebrate the wins either mm -hmm. And I think that goes back to knowing yourself and healing because everyone's carrying around trauma, mm -hmm. whether some more than others, you know, and if you don't deal with that, it'll surface in other ways, whether that's addiction, whether that's abuse, whatever that is. And so like, I'm gonna just say my life hack now. <laughs> no, no, you gotta save it at the end of that No, no, no. But yeah. it's all like so aligned and intrinsic, like what, <laughs> What we do every single day, we uh, what we preach, what we talk about, we actually do because I've ex we're preaching from the mm -hmm. choir. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we're literally sharing the shit that has yeah. helped us get to where we are. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's you can jump in the deep end, but if you don't have the floaties, you know what I mean. But like the floaties yeah. is you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So stay, uh, keep watching if you want to hear the life hack. At the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, so we'll, we'll uh, move on to the TV show. So yeah. we don't get too much into the life yeah. hack spoilers. Uh, so how did that come about? Oh my gosh. Dude, that's a, that's a fun story. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. It's a fun we, podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun podcast. Keep it fun. <laughs> like what Tristan said earlier was never on the goal board, was mm -hmm. never on the vision board. We literally just had our heads down and we were trying to build our little empire and and impact as many people around us um and one day we woke up there was an email that came into the inbox and we're looking at it and it was like you know tv show we want to interview you for something and both of us looked at each other and we're like scam, scam. <laughs> like scam. don't click on it because it's gonna it might put, put a virus on a computer <laughs> or something yeah so we just let it go yeah, and we for went a while on too probably two or three months. But what happened, what started happening was our peers and some real estate agents on Oahu were reaching out to us and they're like, hey, this production company is reaching out to me. They're looking for a husband and wife team that does fix and flips, redevelopments on Oahu and they do this many houses a year and who we think would be good on TV. Mm. And so all of those people started referring mm -hmm. um, the production company mm -hmm. to us. And after we heard that three or four times, we're like, let's go back to that mm -hmm. email. And yeah. like, maybe it's legit, you know? 
And then like just one Zoom led to more Zooms. I mean, we had no idea what the whole TV world even entailed. Like I said, it wasn't on the the plan, you know? Um, And so that was three years ago. One Zoom, yeah, one Zoom led to more Zooms, led to like doing a sizzle reel where they flew down because the production company is out of LA. The film crew is here, but... um, we did that. That had to get pitched to the network. Then that had to get greenlit. Then you do an act one and then mm. that has to go back to the network and get picked up. And then Jeez. you can do a pilot and then that has to go. Like, <laughs> so it's a very long process. And um, we finally got full greenlit after our pilot to do a full season in February of 2023. We wrapped the pilot in December of 2022, which is the episode one Mm -hmm. that you see on the show with the pilot episode. And I think we got greenlit a couple months later in 2023. It was like February, March, and we started filming the season right away. So we filmed all of last year. And then that's what you see season one. That's that, that just finished. And how long was the filming uh, increment? Like, was it because, because you, it, it takes a while to remodel. It took a year. It took a year to film. A good year to do it all. So the, the way that we had it set up was we were filming for like two weeks and then we'd have like a week break or yeah. a two week break. It was like two weeks on, two weeks off, yeah. kind of, you know, like it was a luxury if we actually got the full mm-hmm. two weeks off. But yeah, it was it was a lot Yeah, on top of what we were already it doing. Was, you know? It was a lot more than we even could have envisioned it to mm-hmm. be. It yeah, was all so. the things. It and was fun, crazy, stressful. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But it, the, the end product w- was amazing. And I'm super excited to watch the rest of the episodes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for that, how much of it w- w- you had to plan ahead for TV? Because w- Or were they like really just following you throughout? Or did you have to be like, okay, hey, uncle, can you come say this? Or like, auntie, can you come outside of your yard and like play with the dog or whatever? Yeah. What's interesting with this is all of the stories that you see actually happened but Mm -hmm. they happened before right because we had already got every house you see we actually bought we actually got Mm -hmm. it under contract we actually renovated we actually sold it um but like meeting auntie next door like Mm -hmm. that conversation happened a couple months ago Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so we had to if she was even willing to have that conversation on camera we were very Like, guys, don't ask people to do stuff. Like, they didn't sign up for this, you know? And it's always a a give and a take with production because they're going to try and make the best TV show Mm -hmm. possible, which means, like, getting everything. And then you have us that's like, no, like, leave people alone, you know? Um, But for the most part, it was us showing up filming the scene organically, authentically. And then it was them being like, okay, can you repeat that like 50 million times? And you're like, this way and that way. And and us fighting with them about what we will say and what we won't (laughs) say. And it's the whole TV spin on it, Mm -hmm. you know, but all of the, uh, most of the construction aspect was we're in there doing our thing. They're filming Mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? We had to reenact a couple um of the storylines in the mm, like front the dialogue yeah, yeah the yeah. dialogue because one of the things that was important to us was being able to see how we bought the houses mm. you yeah. know what i mean like those that process because that's a very important part mm. a lot of tv shows are just like walk into a bus up house and they're like they okay bought it. here's the house <laughs> you know what i mean so um and that's a big part of what we do mm-hmm. is helping people that need to sell their house right mm-hmm. a lot of times you you guys you've seen the first episode the houses are horrible that a bank won't finance that mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. like first on bank uh will not finance that house you know what i mean it has to be somebody like us that come in mm-hmm. um to buy it in a non-traditional route uh and so we are getting these houses from people that really really need to sell them and are having a hard time or cannot sell them any other way Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. and so being able to tell that story and show that side of helping out people on the when we buy the houses was important to us yeah and that's his whole role in the business right but it's hard to showcase that part because it's not sexy you know but it's like that's what makes our business go there's nothing Mm -hmm. for us to make beautiful if he's not on the front end. And at the mm. end of the day, we're dealing with people. 
real estate is relationships and real estate is just a byproduct mm -hmm. of those relationships. And I think that that has to be at the forefront always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's cool that you did that because um, Fuzzy's life hack was drive around places and look for houses like that. Driving oh, there you for go. dollars. Yeah. yeah. Drive yeah. for dollars. Is it like go to like, because I, I see places all the time, like even um, in Hawaii Kai, uh, I would always see this one house like run down. Yeah. Nobody was ever living yep. there. Yeah. Yeah. They said, yeah, just go and knock on the door, look yeah. around yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like There's basically leaves. what you guys did in yeah. the first episode. That's yeah. how so you it's cool it. to yeah. see that like an actual image of what he was talking about. Yeah. 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 I know people that that's, that's their whole business model. Mm -hmm. They just, drive around and look for vacant houses, mm -hmm. rundown houses, um, bad landscaping, cars in the driveway, mm -hmm. and they mail that that person or they door yeah. knock that person or they try and find the phone number and call that person. Yeah. Um, Physical the thing is, is, in Hawaii, there's plenty of houses like that. Mm -hmm. Plenty, mm -hmm. plenty vacant houses uh, all over the place. So, I mean, you can imagine what if we brought all of those houses back to inventory mm -hmm. exactly. would be unreal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so how does that happen? How does the house just become vacant? Like they There's move away or they just a variety of things. A, a lot of it is the houses become inherited mm -hmm. and then the family either doesn't want it or they don't live here anymore or they even live on another Island. So mm -hmm. like, for example, we just got a property under contract in Pro City. The guy inherited it six years ago from his from his parents but he lives in Kona mm. and he has his own life and he's like I my life is not on Oahu anymore I don't want to deal with it and he just wants to get rid of it but he hasn't been in the house seen the house come back to Oahu in six years wow. you know what I mean so variety of reasons I mean there's always there's all types of distress it doesn't come it comes in all shapes forms sizes mm. it's financial distress could be a divorce an inheritance. Um, we see so a lot of inherited houses. Mm -hmm. I think, especially from the outside perspective, it's like you inherited a house. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for some people, it comes with a lot. Yeah. It's a problem. It's, yeah. It's you a know burden. What I mean? mm -hmm. A lot of times these inherited houses have a mortgage attached to them, and the person that inherited the house can't afford to pay that mortgage or, or a reverse mortgage. It has a reverse mortgage mm. attached to it. And you have to pay the loan off within three months, oh, the mm -hmm. entire loan of when you inherit that house. And a lot of people can't. So for the people that it's like a burden, sometimes the easier thing for them to do is just walk away. Mm -hmm. They just leave the house there. And Hawaii is crazy because it takes forever to foreclose on a house. So a lot of those vacant houses might be owned by some bank somewhere, mm -hmm. but they're not foreclosing on it or they're working on the foreclosure process. And that takes sometimes mm -hmm. 18 years. I've seen houses yeah. in foreclosure. Wow. Called a zombie. Zombie foreclosure. 18 years. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 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 But a lot of, a lot of different reasons on why somebody would want to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my other question is how do you get the money to do that? So like the first episode you had to uh, spend 400 something thousand. So that's not liquid, right? That's just like you, you use your other equity to like get a loan or like how does that work? Yeah. That's a super so, good question. That and is a good question. I that people all don't know. the time. Yeah. Um, do you want to take that? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, we use non-traditional financing. So there is a whole industry behind what this is. And there are big, big, big mutual funds, hedge funds the way that they make money for their investors is to invest in real these estate. little mm -hmm. real estate projects, right? And so there are these companies out there and they're called hard money loans mm -hmm. is what it's called. And a hard money loan is a loan designed specifically for somebody like us that's going to go and buy the house, renovate it, and then sell it or rent it out. So these loans are asset-based loans. So you don't have to have good credit. You don't have to have W-2 income. You can be 80 grand in debt like we were mm -hmm. in um, and still qualify for the loan because the lender is lending on the deal itself, on the asset itself. So if you're getting a house and you're going to be able to renovate it and it's going to be worth this much after, the lender is going to look at what it's going to be worth and then they'll determine whether or not they will lend it to you. So if mm -hmm. it's a good a good opportunity they're going to lend. And the thing is, is it's a short term loan. So mm -hmm. normally 12 to 24 months. 
and it's an interest only payment every month, but it's a uh, high interest rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's designed for just that, like getting in there, fixing the house up and then figuring mm-hmm. out how you're going to exit it. But right. yeah, the cool thing is, is like I said, it's asset based. Um, and basically anybody can, yeah. and can so do it if the deal is good. They usually find uh 75 to 80 percent of a per- of the purchase price and 100 percent of the renovation so that's oh, how wow. you get your renovation funded and then then there's something called private money loans or private money lenders and so but that comes with a lot of responsibility and that's very relationship based but mm-hmm. like how we funded our first deal was literally going in my our phone and being like hey we have this real estate deal do you want to come in on it and um we're gonna this is exactly what we're gonna do this is the numbers mm-hmm. and then you can grow your money through the renovation itself mm-hmm. and so that's how majority of fix and flippers or real estate investors are able to buy these deals renovate them and then sell them. Wow. So it's yeah. a lot of trust and it's it's a gamble on their part. Yeah. Relationship business. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that's what it was like. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people think that there's a common misconception that you need all of this money mm-hmm. to invest in real estate and that's not true. Yeah. So if I wanted to buy a house right now, mm-hmm. uh, I would get a loan and just but like a down payment or something. That's the traditional way. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't encourage that one. I do encourage that one. I think there's different avenues for different people, but I think it starts with financial education. I mm-hmm. think it starts with understanding good debt versus bad debt. I think it understand uh, starts with understanding a basic budget mm-hmm. and like what your finance, because you would be amazed at how many people don't do a budget mm-hmm. and don't even follow a budget um, and how simple it is to actually create one and follow and stick to it and have that discipline mm-hmm. to stick to it. Um, I think it starts there. And then once you become, let's say your goal is to actually get out of debt. So then you can raise your credit score. So then you can go buy a home. Then then there's an avenue for mm-hmm. that. And then learning different financial vehicles to actually grow your money. So there's whole life insurance. There's first position HELOCs. There's um, there are CDs, there's in passive investing through real estate. There's just all these different things you can do to actually grow wealth so that now you've, let's say you did that for two years and you've created 30, 40, $50,000 passively. Now you have the ability to go and buy a home if you mm-hmm. wanted to, you know what I mean? And start small. So, but it all starts with this basic financial education, mm-hmm. but yeah. And then going, once you're bank financeable, yeah go shop around, mm. go, go to a broker that can get yeah. you the best loan product because there's loan products out there that are three to 5% three and down, percent down, you yeah, know, 5% down. And like there's condos right now that are available for under 500,000 and oh. they're, they're nice condos. We've renovated mm. them. They're, yeah, yeah. they're super mm. cute, you know, and starting small living in that for two years, then you can sell that and pay no capital gains tax. So basically all that money is free money that mm-hmm. you get to keep and then go uh, upgrade, upgrade to a higher asset, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, a single family home. So like, there's just ways you can do it or you can be crazy like us mm-hmm. and flip your way into home. Yeah. So yeah. like, we're very active. Like you're right. It's super hard. Like I don't want to sugarcoat it at all. This no. business is, uh, there's a lot of risk involved. There's a ton of responsibility involved and it's, it's hard work. Mm-hmm. You know? It's full time. You know, yeah. right now we're, we're not passive investors. We're very active investors. We're at our job sites. Mm-hmm. We're in working on the business every single day. Um, but how we actually got our house is it was, it was a renovation. So when we first bought our home, it was down the street from Collar Hill high school. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was emotionally invested in that house from the beginning because <laughs> yeah. we were renting and I grew up on duck road, two streets mm-hmm. over. And I was like, this feels like home, home. Mm-hmm. you know? And it was still a goal for us to own a home because we were still renting. And that had holes in the roof. There was like 20 cars outside. Mm. It was really, really bad. Um, And we did the renovation. We We were going to sell it. I still had a limiting belief that like now wasn't the time. But God's like, haha, that's funny. (laughs) Um, And so we put on the market and we were going to sell it. We we got under contract. And I remember we were in San Diego with your family. And it was like closing day where we were supposed to close and we were going to make the most money we had ever made that was going to like project our business forward and like change our life. And they, they backed out Mm -hmm. and I was like crying. I'm like, what's happening, you know? And 
we looked at each other and we're like, I guess we're supposed to keep it. I guess we're supposed to live here. And so we went to the bank and we actually did what's called a cash out refinance. Mm -hmm. So that's where we were able to get the house appraised. And then you can cash out a certain percentage of whatever that appraised value is. And we actually got paid to live in that home. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. And that's that, grand. Yeah. That's oh. crazy. And that's, cool. that's the power of real estate. Yeah. I don't know any other vehicle that could have done that. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, this is so inspiring. Uh, I know a lot of people, the wheels are turning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're probably yeah. like me, like, how do I get in on this? Yeah, it is. so no, many different like, things, I, man. I mean, and, and getting back to the TV show, I think that's one of the reasons why. Like, we asked ourselves why, too. Yeah. It, it was a, a long, hard, thought-out decision to actually do it. You know what I mean? It wasn't just something like, yes, let's do it. Um, we weighed out all the options. And one of the things that we saw was we're going to be able to impact more lives and get to where we wanted to get quicker right mm -hmm. um and so part of that goes on to i and and to just to go back a second when we started we were 80 grand in debt and we were just trying to crawl out yeah. like we just wanted to be able to to get out of debt and mm -hmm. maybe stay here but i think it was probably two years in where something switched and it didn't it wasn't about that part anymore now it was about finding a purpose and a passion behind what mm -hmm. we were doing. Mm -hmm. And that is where we were able to merge our two passions, which is helping people and building generational wealth for our family, yeah. you know, so our kids will never have to worry about anything yeah. um, in that, in real estate, mm -hmm. you know yeah. what I mean? And that's so. where Dils and Aloha was born out of mm -hmm. that mending of passion and purpose and how do we help people like us that are just missing a piece of the puzzle and are searching for it. Mm -hmm. because, people like us when we were back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when we first got into the industry, it was kind of rigid and cutthroat. Like, no one was really open arms. Hey, I'll share everything with you. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't like, like that. A lot of gatekeeping. Yeah. Yes. Of gatekeeping. And there was even like, people were saying, oh, if you, um, you we're having this meetup, but you have to do so and so many deals to mm. even be there. I'm like, how am I going to learn? I have, mm. How am I going to do one deal if you won't even let me learn yeah. alongside you? So when, when we got some traction and momentum, I was like, okay, we want to do the opposite because I never yeah. want people to feel how we felt. Mm. It was like, we were alone on an island, like on an island, mm. you know? So it was like, I want to share. Inception. Yes, I want to share everything I can with open arms. And we're still learning. We're still growing. And like I said, I'm never going to stop. So it's like, let's do our own meetup and we'll break down the deals for everyone. People can come to the deal itself, mm -hmm. to the house, and I'll share how we got it, what the struggle is, what I'm doing, what our exit strategy is, how we paid for it, everything. Everything. Like, literally so cool. everything. Full everything. transparency. Just yeah, come. Full transparency. Just come. Ask me yeah. any questions. You know what I mean? And then a lot of networking takes place there. You know, people are like, how do I get deals? How do I fund deals? Like everything you need Who's is a in that contractor mm -hmm. is in like, that room. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing that for almost Couple two years. years. Huh? Yeah. yeah two and years. Yeah. and we've grown into, you know, like most times eighty people come out to wow. these. It's so, wild. So, yeah. It's, it's cool. Maybe one day I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Trying yeah, to get yeah. caught. Yeah. yeah, maybe we'll go together. <laughs> He's so interested yeah. too yeah, yeah. in learning, mm -hmm. you know? So. Yeah, that's cool. I think the, see the, the one thing uh, that may stop people is like, okay, if I have money, I can do this. But like, okay, why are you so expensive? The jobs aren't great. How do I make money to even mm -hmm. get to that place? Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think it's a it's a two prong kind of approach mm -hmm. and fuzzy kind of talked about it a little bit, but it depends on what the goal is. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you want to get into real estate to build wealth, you don't have to do it here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of people will be like, well, I want to do it in Hawaii. I want to own um, in Hawaii. And and that just goes back to what Tris was talking about before, like. It is unfair here. Our prices are outrageously crazy. Mm -hmm. Our the cost of living is outrageously crazy and our wages just don't add up. It doesn't it's not easy in any way shape or form um to be able to live here and thrive here. I think the one thing that you have to do 
is first get educated about how investment works and how money works, do a budget, all of the things that she's talking about. Um, but a lot of people have to make tons of sacrifices. You might have to start some kind of a side hustle mm -hmm. in order to, to do it. You can sit there and be like, complain, right? Mm -hmm. and, and be the victim, be like, this is all that I'm getting paid. When the pain of doing that over and over and over becomes greater than your willingness to stay there, you will find something else to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's not fair, but like if you really want to do it, yeah. you will, you get another job, you get a side job, mm -hmm. you start a business, you literally start a podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, it's. Yeah. No go. I also think that there's leverage and it's plugging in and networking and joining a community and figuring out what other people are doing because nobody started with a million dollars. Nobody started with all this money to invest. Everybody probably started at zero or negative like mm -hmm. we did, you know, but like somehow we did it. And we're saying you don't need money to invest. We didn't have it. But like it all starts with community. It all starts with you getting out of your comfort zone and plugging into the meetups, going into a Facebook group and getting mm -hmm. to know people that are doing exactly what you want to be doing. And you'll be surprised at the networking and the relationships and the connections that take place that it's like, be a connector, mm -hmm. be like, go into a room and be like, what do you have? What do you need? And then you'll be, if you're a connector, you're going to find a way where you can plug into a deal that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's going to change your life. Maybe this person already has a deal and you know, somebody that has money, you can connect mm -hmm. them and take a piece of the puzzle. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or you have the deal and somebody else has money. So like you don't necessarily, I think it's about, again, back to the thing mm -hmm. of changing your, your viewpoints, changing your thoughts on what you think is possible because all it takes is a switch of a lens and you'll see a whole different world. Yeah. Awesome. I, I think that especially here, we're kind of stuck in the sphere of who is around us. You know what I mean? And I think the easy thing to do is look at, um, I don't make enough money. How can I make more money? But I think the focus should be on figuring out what is possible. And mm -hmm. if you stay in this sphere, like think about it. If you're growing up, the person that was most successful in your life, in your circle, made $70,000 a year or $100,000 a year. You growing up, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the ceiling right yeah. there. That's, that's it. But what if you broke through that and you started hanging out with people that are making $5 million a year, $10 million a year, you're raising what your understanding of possible is. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people just need to know that something's possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you don't even know it's possible, you're literally just going to do whatever you think is possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So being able to widen that sphere, get uncomfortable, get around people that are doing other things, bigger things um, will help you grow. Yeah. Like it, 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 you have to do that. It still intimidates us when we walk into these rooms where these people are making a million dollars a month and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, like, you know, but I want to be in those yeah. rooms because they're blowing my mind, yeah. you know, and I know that now that is actually possible. Let me go and figure out how. Mm -hmm. It's like that saying, uh, hang out with five millionaires, you become the six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I agree with everything you said. I love the mindset. I love your guys' work ethic, the hustle, everything. I'm becoming a bigger fan. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you you're saying everything that Jordan and I talk about, some yeah. of the beliefs we have when we talk about mm -hmm. um, stuff like that to, um, with other guests. So yeah. like, you're just reiterating all those things. And I, I hope people are really listening and taking this to heart. Because that's so how you too. become successful. Yes, yeah. I hope so. In too. any in any, any realm, industry. not just, any realm, not real estate. Because you guys are just be giving life, yeah. business, career advice right exactly. now. Yeah. yeah, So so awesome. <laughs> we'll get into more of the uh, the HGTV, the yeah. renovation law um, questions in mm -hmm. our social media fan questions. But we'll take a shishi break and we'll be right back. Shishi awesome. break. Yeah. Cool. Immerse yourself in the underwater wonders of Hawaii's marine life with Hawaii Ocean Charters hands-on guided snorkeling tours. Whether it's your first time falling in love with Waikiki or you're rediscovering its beauty just like me, there is no better way to see it than from the ocean. 
Personally, it was one of the best things I have done this year. I got to snorkel with some turtles and fishes, and I was able to catch the coolest sunset over the water. Conveniently located in Kakako with online booking and live availability, finding the perfect day on the water couldn't be easier with them. Ride in style on their unique and well cared for power catamaran that offers all the amenities you need. Locally owned and operated, their friendly crew lives for sharing their love for the ocean with others. Sunset cruises, guided snorkeling tours, well and dolphin watching, coastal sightseeing, and firework shows are among the tours their guests love the most. Use code KIA50 to get $50 off of your next charter. Are you looking for a game that's guaranteed to make you laugh at your next party? You need to check out Moat Gabs, the newest card game designed right here in Hawaii for locals by locals. Race against the clock as you read seemingly random phrases that sound like gibberish at first, like Peel Gold Main Coal, or Heat Heat Wood Go, or something like Male Lay Cow Leaky Mock Up, until you figure out the local phrase. Melikalikimaka, Eddie Wood Go, and Pickle Mango. Each card has phrases that could be a person, place, or thing, but any local should know them. They just might not understand it at first. Moat Gabs, the fun kind game where you read the gibberish out loud to decode the local phrase. All right, we're back from a quick shishi break. Wala to Shakti for providing the best quality shishi. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the social media fan questions presented by Texco in Hawaii. First question, I gotta go for my sister, Leili E. KD. She says, Are they gonna have a second season? Oh. I think everybody's asking that, huh? I uh... know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not watching, they're just like, you can see they're <laughs> holding something in. Um. <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that not, was hard to think not into sure. that. <laughs> not sure yet. You got to um, watch the visual feed to see yeah. what, what she just did. <laughs> but we will keep everyone posted as, okay. soon, as, as yeah. soon as we know. We Contractual stuff. Yes. NDS, kind things. What we would love to share right away. Yeah, yeah. So just stay tuned. Follow. Yeah, follow, 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 yeah. follow. Okay. I mean... Like I said, I only watched one episode, but it's it's a really good show. <laughs> All right, and I'm a big TV guy, so right on. I I'm and I'm not biased because I didn't even know you guys until yeah, I never even knew. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So it, like legitly, it's a it's a really good show. Awesome. And I want you guys to design my house in the future. You got it. <laughs> you can do it. You got we'll it. We'll do that. <laughs> I really liked uh the this one clip. I was just showing my girlfriend this morning. It was the um, Kanye West. You did like a Kanye West song to it. Yeah. Okay. The real Kanye. Uh, the yeah, something yeah. Kanye. Yeah. You uh -huh. know that video? Yeah. 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 The the renovation at the end with that, um, the bathtub and like the mm -hmm. the bathroom yeah. and like the light in the back. Like, uh -huh. oh, that was so nice. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. okay, it's goals right there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The jam. I think every renovation we do, I'm like, oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite. This is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that was from my, my sister who's a big fan of the show. So. Lay, you're just gonna have to stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, next question comes from DJ underscore brand eighty nine. Any budget friendly DIY tips that can have a huge impact on sprucing up a room? Oh yeah, there's tons. Do you want to share yours? Uh, something you can do that is pretty inexpensive that will totally transform a space is change your light fixtures. Light, light fixtures light okay. fixtures can go a long long way and you don't have to go and pay i mean home depot and lowe's have they're stepping up their game <laughs> they're getting cuter they stuff totally but are. like amazon has really nice mm -hmm. high quality light fixtures that you can find for a great deal and that can literally transform a space so mm -hmm. light fixtures fans you know like they have the old fans from the 90s if you get a hundred and fifty dollar fan. Yeah. You know, that can change a space. Yeah, I think uh in kitchens for sure, uh a lot of times your cabs are still in okay shape, shape. Literally changing out your handles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um a lot of the uh the handles from old design kind times, yeah, they're just they make it look old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so if you can 
just order new hardware off of Amazon, like mm -hmm. very cheap, but you switch out the hardware. Um, if you have a little bit more skill, you can paint your cabinets. Mm -hmm. You can make a kitchen look brand new, yeah. like literally brand new. Yeah. And it adds a ton of value because all the value in houses are in the kitchens and the bathrooms, bathrooms. kitchens so. and bathrooms so houses and then like obviously depending on what your budget is you can go up from there like flooring makes a big difference um paint, paint makes a huge difference um even if your cabs are in good shape and you just want to upgrade your formica countertops mm -hmm. to like a quartz if you have a few thousand dollars like you can do little things here and there you don't have to do what we do mm -hmm. which is like gut Whole and everything yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah there's a lot of little things you can do okay cool i love sharing that yeah Next question comes from Texan Hula. This person says, any plans to renovate on other islands like Maui? Yeah, so we actually do renovate on other islands. Yep. Um, we renovate on Big Island mm -hmm. uh, right now. Nice. And Hilo? Hilo? Yeah, Hilo. And Kona. <laughs> Hilo and Kona. Okay. Yeah, nice. both sides. Um, we actually love Hilo because it's still priced very well there. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the homes that we do in Hilo, we actually keep. We mm -hmm. don't sell them oh, okay. to anyone. Yeah. Um, and also on Kona side. But we want so badly to go to Maui. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually know a lot of people that are up there mm -hmm. that are locals that are doing what we're doing. Um, and I can guarantee you in the very near future we will be up on Maui um, partnering with some of those people mm -hmm. that are that boots on the there. ground that live there yeah. um, to do renovations there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Okay. Next question comes from rancy.ee. How do you pay for the down payments when banks and hard money are asking for 20%? We, we um, talked about that a little bit. In yeah. The, yeah. You want to expand a little bit yeah. more? Yeah. So it's through something called capital partnerships mm -hmm. or private money lending. And it's basically where people, mom, dad, uncle, auntie, relationships come in and fund the gap. It's called gap funding. And um, they invest into the hard asset itself. They have a lean position on the property. So let's say you guys get a we, let's say you're investing with us we get abducted by aliens, you mm. actually get a house. You get a lean position in the, mm. in the house. So if, you know, you can sell the house and recoup your funds. Um, and then that's how you earn an, an interest rate and you grow your money that way. So that's how a lot of investors cover the down payment, the yeah, gap. The gap. The gap. Yep. Okay. Because you're, you're really, in that scenario, you're providing somebody an opportunity to grow their money. So a lot of people that have 401ks, they, mm -hmm. they're in a W-2 job that they have a 401k and or a, an IRA, mm -hmm. some other investment, maybe they have money in the stock market, but mm -hmm. the stock market isn't giving them the return that they want. Your, your real estate deal is an investment vehicle and mm -hmm. you can inject money in, into it and give them a better return out most yeah. of mm -hmm. the time, right? Yeah. And so you're presenting that to um, just everyday people that go around. I know our first private money lender was her brother mm -hmm. and he had worked construction for most of his life and he had saved everything. Mm -hmm. um, and he lent us money out of that and we grew his money for him. And he actually was invested in the stock market and he was like, but why do I keep losing money? Like, this <laughs> is crazy. You know? And he's like, what are you going to do? Like, how is it secured? Mm. And you're saying double digits, like I'm in, you know, and then he was hooked from there. And that's once a lot of people start to understand the power of double digit returns mm -hmm. and a secured vehicle to invest there. It's game changing for them because that's how they can invest and passively, mm. you know, they maybe they love their W2 mm -hmm. and they don't want to do what we do, but they want to have, know for sure that their money is growing and investing in real estate is a great way to do that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, well, great, great advice. So I hope whoever I hope that answers this, your question. I hope whoever asked this is watching. <laughs> yeah. um, but going back to the alien abduction stuff. Yes. Yeah. So like if like <laughs> I hopefully not hopefully if my sister Kanoi, for example, got abducted by aliens and I could have all her money, is that what you're saying or something? 
<laughs> she probably the lowest if on my sibling list. Yeah. Now. Listen, Can if I? it's recorded somewhere where okay. you are next in line to get her money, okay. then yes. All right. Mm, uh, it's classic. Does she have a the trust? Fun. Does she have a will? Are you named? She, she flies for Hawaiian, so will I get her benefits? As oh, the beneficiary. That would be even better. Yeah. Because <laughs> I got five siblings. This, oh, yeah. Yeah, so. And so, Kuna, you're probably at the bottom, so I'm sorry. <laughs> you're the first <laughs> one. So funny. <laughs> okay, oh, sorry. Just classic. random random thought. I just had to ask about that one. Okay, so yeah. Because I definitely heard the alien abduction one and I was thinking that. Yeah. That's so okay. funny. <laughs> okay, next question comes from K-A-L. K-E-A-L. I don't know if that's an I or L. Kyo all. Let's just call him Kyo all. Okay. There you go. Um, this person says, "How and where do you find reliable, time conscious, and trusty contractors?" Ooh, that's Man, a good that is a super one. good question, and I think it's probably one of the most commonly asked mm. questions we get because it truly is one of the hardest pieces of mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. business. Um, and I think the best way always is going to be through referrals. Yeah, um, word of mouth. Word of mouth, people that you know, like, and trust, uh, and they have done work for that person, they refer them out. So not trying to plug Deals in Aloha community, but at the Deals in Aloha meetups, you can meet contractors, good, mm-hmm. trusted contractors. Uh, I think it also comes with uh, experience and hard knocks because mm-hmm. we have by far been through a lot of contractors that um, were not good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I think referrals is going to be your best way to find the good contractors. But even after that, you need to be able to ask them the right questions yeah. and go preview their jobs and see other projects that they have done. Talk to other people that they've worked for. And you got to vet. You got to mm-hmm. vet properly. And um, you got to have paperwork in place. No handshake agreements, even mm-hmm. though that's local style at the end of the day when you're dealing with this volume of Mm -hmm. money um it can't it has to be a handshake and a signature i'll give you a little a little hack one good way to find contractors is jump in your car just like you're going around Mm -hmm. drive for for contractors (laughs) you drive for contractors but i'm serious you jump in your car you drive around you look for job sites Mm -hmm. that you can see a, a can out in front there's people working on the house walk in and go talk to those people. Yeah. We found multiple contractors that, that way, way where we go in, that's the first introduction and we start talking story from there. They take us to another job site. We talk to that owner and boom, that guy's actually doing work for us. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, build those connections. I, I say connections are great, but connections are stronger. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love so, that. yeah. <laughs> but the connections. Stronger. Yeah. Okay, next question comes from It's Me, Shell. This person says, how do you get permits so fast? We don't. We don't. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody does. (laughs) I think, you know, people see on the show and they're like, oh my gosh, they got their permit in three months. But that's not true. Remember, it took us a year to film that season. So Mm -hmm. the answer is we don't. But I think the key is finding... Um, draftsmen and permit routers and contractors that know the system and can help navigate that system. Mm -hmm. That's the key is working with very competent people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People that are constantly following. Um, Yeah. A lot of times, and this is getting into the weeds on how DPP works because we could have a whole podcast just just on on this Mm -hmm. one topic. Um, the the DPP process has to you have to go through a bunch of different um, departments. departments, right? And every department normally gives you some comments mm-hmm. that you need to fix. Um, but a lot of times, if you don't have somebody constantly checking to see if any comments came out of the department, it could sit in there for two months before the architect actually like goes back and addresses those comments. Yeah. So you want to stay on top of it immediately and not to mention they only review in cycles so Mm -hmm. if you had comments and it got missed over that cycle you'll get kicked back and you'll have to wait till the next cycle yeah it's brutal brutal. the the one silver lining is that 
they are being very cognizant on mm -hmm. trying to reform the system. I mean, right. everybody heard last week or mm -hmm. maybe not, but we did because we're in the industry yeah. that they're in introducing new software, mm -hmm. like AI. AI software that should be in place within the next 18 months. And we could be getting permits in as soon as four, like four weeks. Wow. Which that would be amazing. A game changer. Um, but I'll believe amazing. it when I see it. Yeah, but yeah, that yeah. would be amazing. Yeah. But that kind of, that goes into, you know, the whole topic of how the prices just keep going crazy. And if we're able to relax some of the building mm -hmm. um, zoning and being able to get permits quicker. What that could it do. It all comes down to supply and demand. So. Yeah. I mean, it could literally just... Um, flush money into the community. It could increase housings that that will therefore, you know, bring down demand, which will also bring down prices. But like, why can't the city understand mm -hmm. that? You know? Yeah. yeah. Is it is the permits taking a long time? Is that specifically a Hawaii thing or is that real estate in general? No, that's Hawaii a Hawaii has thing. Worst it's Hawaii thing. Do you know that there's yeah. places on the mainland you can literally walk in, submit your plans and leave with a permit in the same day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like going to the DMV and just getting a license or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like we will talk to people because we know a lot of people all over um, the United States. And they're like, man, I had to wait two months for oh, my like, permit. And I that's wish. like, that's a long time for them, you know. And we're like, yeah. hey, we wait a year and a half, <laughs> two years. It, it, we just wait. got permits for my parents' house. Two, two years. years to get them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it's a system that I know they're working on. But no one is exempt from it. And mm -hmm. you just have to do your best to be diligent at making sure it's moving through the yeah, process. Yeah, work with competent mm -hmm. people. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that uh, and use that to my advantage for now. Be like, oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm 31. They'll be like, oh, so you're going to buy a house? Like, no, um, I actually got land. I've just been waiting for my permit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. So I bought a long time ago. I just I can't build. You that's know, so yeah. funny. waiting for the permits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> okay. Next question comes from well, there, there's a bunch of people who yeah. are like my favorite show. Please tell me season two is coming yeah. out. Favorite show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure you saw that. Awesome. Just want to shout that, that out. Uh, but this one, I'm I'm gonna kind of combine two people because okay. yeah. it's kind of the same yeah. thing. So this one says, Gray Gale says, HT, HGTV couple with the best chemistry, hands down. Curious to hear how they met. Mm. And then La underscore TT underscore No Fear says, how long you guys was friends before the butterfly started? So Ooh. let's Love talk it. about the meet cute. And then yeah. how long were you friends before the butterfly started? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, the butterflies were instantaneous. <laughs> La, uh, butterflies um, at first sight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, let's just answer that one. Mm -hmm. It was more like in instant butterflies it's from across the room. From you, both sides. You, yeah. you both was a cocoon. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as you saw each other, just boom. Kind of. Yeah. That's yeah. a very good analogy. Yeah. So my mom was actually his boss. Okay. Um, so I was in graduate school at the time and I needed a place to do my practicum. So of course I reach out to mom. I'm like, mom, can you mm -hmm. hook, hook your daughter up? I need to get these hours. And she didn't know that you're talking about a guy, not actually. <laughs> I know. Hours, right? yeah. <laughs> I think she would have let you. That's hilarious. I know she let That's you. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so I would come in after school and I would sit at her desk and I would do whatever she wanted me to do. But his desk was right across from her desk. Mm. So we would just stare at each other. <laughs> and I was working there for a long time before. So like we had formed a really good relationship. Her and uh, me and her mom. Yeah, uh, okay. Like she was my boss. She was teaching me literally everything. Mm -hmm. And so she actually had met my family already. Mm -hmm. um, she knew exactly what I was about uh, and then saw my work ethic and everything. Mm -hmm. So. It's funny because the first time that she walked into the office, it's it was really before. that. Yeah, like I immediately was like, who is that? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I remember reaching over to my coworker and I was like, who is that? <laughs> and she's like, and he said, don't even think about it. That's the <laughs> boss's daughter. That was, <laughs> years, before. That was years before. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, OK, uh, all right. <laughs> that's so funny. And then years later, right, I was we sat across from each other and then mm. I just ended up being like, Mom, who who is that? You know what I mean? She's like, oh, my gosh, let's come. Hi. You have such a good family. Basically saying like she yes, served me up. Yes, oh, really? She, yeah. He's yeah. good. And um, I slid into his DMs. How great is it to go across the, the table? The, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I was like, I mean, we were 
were doing making small talk and stuff, but it was very professional setting, oh, okay. right? Yeah. So it was yeah, like yeah, it was work, work. It's like, oh, so what do you got for lunch today? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I the remember. traffic on the H three, huh? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was so like that. It's like, how did that audit go with your contract? It, it literally was like that. Yeah, I remember. Was. And so I slid into the DMs. We went on a date, and we hung out every day since. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Have, what's was... the longest you've been apart since then? Oh. Wow, I don't even. I don't I've know. never even thought I probably, about I, well, it. Well, I automatically go to the trip when you were going to the when you were doing trade beach show club and you went to a trade show. Yeah, it was but that was like only three days. Yeah, wow, maybe three days. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. not long. Yeah, when we work together. We do yeah, everything yeah, together, yeah. but yeah, it doesn't work. feel. I'm not sick of you yet. <laughs> well, that's good. How long have you been together? <laughs> uh, ten, ten years. years. Wow, ten, ten years. years. Yeah, awesome. we knew each other for. Two. Almost two years before we got married. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we actually got married and like, and then immediately got pregnant. It was mm-hmm. crazy. He's like, he's, he's, I'm old. Well, this is the thing. <laughs> I was old. older. I, I wanted to have, have kids already because yeah. I want to be a, a young dad. It's like <laughs> a part of them, like teaching them sports, you yeah. know, all the things. So, and then my brother got married and it took them like a year and a half to get pregnant. So like, we gotta start trying. We gotta start yeah, trying. Exactly. First, first time's a try. <laughs> yeah, like that. And boom. So, so we actually got married and had our our daughter, our first child, within the same year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, because she came a month early too, which that was a whole nother <laughs> journey. But yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you guys are a great couple. <laughs> right on. And I think it shows on top of the the TV the show. TV show. Yeah. Got yeah. some fans. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's go. One more question. Um. Okay. What about this one? Wait. Yeah, yeah, I like this one. Okay. Uh how this comes from London's London Sailor. Mm-hmm. How different is your fear slash risk taking in flips from beginning of your career to now? Oh, that's such wow, a that's good a cool question. question. And I, I think it's interesting because the roles have kind of reversed. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So when we first got into real estate and we were doing our first couple of years deals i was the one that was like let's go Mm -hmm. like i don't care we're gonna figure it out i was the way more risky one now the roles have totally flipped where he's like let's go and i'm like wait we already have this on our plate Mm -hmm. like i think we have more to lose now Mm -hmm. you know what i mean in the beginning we had nothing we were in debt like we literally just risk it like Mm -hmm. what's the worst that could happen more debt (laughs) but i think as time progresses with anything in life you get experience with something under your belt your risk tolerance gets pushed up a Mm -hmm. little bit more a little bit more Mm -hmm. a little bit more so i don't think that it has definitely not gone away at all for us i think our tolerance for it definitely has become bigger and we're doing a lot bigger things now you know mm-hmm. so still a lot of mitigated risk involved but it it was scary in the beginning mm-hmm. bro like yeah. it, and we didn't know a lot you know mm-hmm. so it yeah. was it was a big learning curve for sure yeah and i think you you once you get proof of concept you gain confidence in your ability to duplicate and do it again and again and again and I, obviously we've been doing it for years now. So like we don't feel the same fear about flipping that we did six years mm-hmm. ago. But I think our fear comes from different things. Now it comes mm-hmm. from wanting to raise the bar or wanting to do a new business model or mm-hmm. frick being on national television mm-hmm. for the world to pick you apart. Like mm-hmm. so fear comes from different places now, I think. Mm-hmm. But I think the key is not letting that fear stop you from mm-hmm. forward movement because that's the worst thing you could do is stop and uh. it happens a lot in the beginning i mm-hmm. think fear holds back every of uh, people from trying new things all the time but it's the one thing that when we're talking to new people getting started they get stuck just like in that learning process but no action ever takes place because when you're learning there's no risk right you're mm-hmm. just learning but the minute that it it becomes okay the learning stop you got to take a step mm-hmm. forward that first step is the scariest step you'll ever take yeah um but is. you have to take that step mm-hmm. if you want to keep going you know yeah. what i mean so well that's why one of the affirmations is i'm comfortable being uncomfortable mm-hmm. because that's where the growth mm-hmm. actually takes place is yeah. in that that anxiety yeah. and being able to sit with it. You just become mm-hmm. homies with fear and you just keep it going. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Beautiful things are on yeah. the other side of fear. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. Yes. Yeah. 
and I, I can I can tell you've been through some stuff to get where you're at because most people who are at this point mentally, you had to go through some stuff. You had to be uncomfortable. Mm. You had to have failures yeah. before you had the successes. So a hundred percent. I mean, I love still it. yet, like you mm-hmm. know, like tomorrow I could be freaking out. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But I know how to handle it better exactly. now. Yeah. 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 I love that because I, I think it's important. And this is the thing, like you said that, I think a lot of people need to be able to look back at a point mm. where they can use it as motivation. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And your trials and tribulations are your own. And maybe I look on the outside, I'm like, oh, that wasn't that bad. But for you, it could have been the most crazy moment mm-hmm. in your life. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And you use that as fuel. Mm -hmm. Like I look back and I use Mm -hmm. that standing in front of the judge as fuel. I'm Mm -hmm. like, dude, my worst day right now. I I go back there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I am so blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and you use that Mm -hmm. to keep you going through the hard times now. Yeah. Yeah. Perspective is all perspective. Perspective is so good. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Mahalo for sharing it. Mm. And mahalo everybody for the social media fan questions. Make sure you leave some for our next guest and maybe a question will make it on the podcast. Okay, so to wrap up the the television show, which hopefully we got we get a second season. Yes. Please, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, what was I gonna say? <laughs> okay, happy, uh, happy. What was the uh what was like the biggest takeaway from that for you two? And what like highlights lowlights everything of the tv yeah just kind of like give me a a summer oh man summary of summation i think that's the word i think that's the word um that that we can that we can do it and that we can show up in that space as who we are and i think it's also super important to walk through a door that God opens for you, even if it's unexpected. Um, that was a huge thing for for me. It's like, am I supposed to be here? Uh, but yes, um, walk through that door and do it. And then I think um, <laughs> the production company like <laughs> probably hated us for a minute because I don't. I don't think we were the easiest to work with, to be <laughs> honest with you. I think we were, um, we fought and bucked a lot on certain things because if we were going to go on national television, like we didn't take it lightly. Mm-hmm. Um, and we wanted to show up as authentic to who we were and what we do every day because it's like, you know, this isn't just some TV show we just drummed up together and flew out there for Hawaii. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, no, we eat here. We sleep here. Mm-hmm. We raise our kids here. We, you, we're we from this place. Mm-hmm. This is what we do every day. So it's very important how we show up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they were caught off guard a little bit just because a lot of the people that are on TV, that's their goal. Like their, their end all be all is to be on TV and then do the next TV show and the next mm-hmm. TV show. But that was never, ever the goal for us. And yeah. so we were like, this is this who is, we are. This is our this business. Is, <laughs> this is our home. This is, these are our relationships. These are our people. Like, we are going to be this way. You know yeah. what I mean? And so we had a lot of bucking back and forth. But I think the highlight for me is all the people that oh we got gosh. to highlight and mm-hmm. bring along with us. Yeah. I think that was the ultimate like coolest thing to see and we're starting to see it now because people are like reaching out like oh who who did that wallpaper yeah um where did you get those cabs from yeah who did that pool you know what i mean and so being able to highlight other local businesses Mm -hmm. i I didn't think it was going to have as big of an impact as it does um and that we're seeing but just elevating everybody around, around us, us. You know what I and mean? Like, I think that's so there's cool. There's nothing, there's not no bigger compliment than to hear um, like, thank you for representing Ho- Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Like that, oh my gosh. It's brought me to tears so many times mm-hmm. because again, like we don't take it lightly. Like we actually mm-hmm. carry it very heavy on our shoulders. And so that's the biggest compliment anyone mm-hmm. could, could share is like, thank you. You represent Hawaii so well. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. Mission. I love that. Oh my I, gosh. I love yeah. hearing that. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things. So like yeah. when I would go out, I'd 
get recognized for the podcast. Yeah. yeah. But I love it because it's not like, because I'm a influencer that does TikTok dancing. Right, or right, yeah. right, right. Like we're both community driven. Yeah. It's, it's because 100%. like we're known for helping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For being involved in the community. So yeah. a lot of times it's, Oh, thank you for doing this. Yeah. You're representing the Lahui. Yeah. yeah. And that's the best compliment. It is. Yeah. By yeah. Far. And sometimes you can get so caught up in, you know, the stressors of running your mm-hmm. business or whatever, and you don't realize that the impact and the reach that's oh, actually sure. being yeah. created, right? Yeah. And so when you hear it, it's just like, wow, you know. It's like this is why I do yeah. it's not this this is not why I do, but it but it's a good it's great. It's, it's a good reaffirmation yeah, yeah. for what you're doing. And reflection you know I mean? and motivation. Yeah, yeah. And if sometimes the emotional income is mm-hmm. not sometimes, all the time yeah. the emotional income is way more important than the actual yeah. income itself, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I say like like you get to a point where you're secure and you're confident, like you don't need the compliments, but the compliments are great. Come on, we'll human take, nature. Yeah, 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 we'll human nature, yeah. you know, some, right? some people, you know, they're they're bad at taking compliments. Yeah. Just give the compliments. Yeah. 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 yeah, I love it. Like, yeah, I can control my ego, but yeah, <laughs> come on, make it a little bigger once I'll work yeah. for compliments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, again, great job on the show. Looking forward to more future yes. productions, yeah. even yes. if it's not even with that. Totally. Um, but at this point in the podcast, we're coming to the back end. I'd like to ask all of my guests, uh, in their life, how do they keep it aloha? Yeah. How do you keep it? I how mean, do you keep it aloha? Yeah, there's just, many different ways. There's yeah. so mm-hmm. many different ways. I mean, for me, the two words come up and it's emotion and action and how they work together. And so I think it's how you show up in your business, how you show up in life, how you love on people, how you care about people, empathy. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we have the aloha um, that was indoctrinated into the state and it's on our wall and I see it every day and it's, it's kindness, humility, humility, connectedness, working together. So it's all of those things. Um, Thinking of, of others. I, I think people first, people over profits is how we show up in mm-hmm. in business and like i said it's relationships and real estate is a byproduct mm-hmm. of that and i think that's how we spread a little yeah, yeah. It's, it's just yeah, a tool yeah. it's a tool real estate is a tool yeah. yeah it literally is a tool i i automatically think of community mm-hmm. i yeah. think that's probably at the top of what we do and strive for is to to build and have a community that man is thriving here yeah. you know what i mean and and sharing aloha with everybody around them you know what i mean it's it's literally a compound effect yeah. when it comes down to it mm-hmm. and so like the ultimate goal is if all the people leave that that make hawaii special what is hawaii mm-hmm. right so if we can play a small part Mm. in keeping Mm. the local people here by educating them by selling off market houses directly to them them, below market value whatever it is you know what i mean empowering them and then not only doing just that but teaching other people Mm -hmm. how to do that right and then before you know it there's this huge community of born and bred hawaiians locals people from here that are spreading it to all the people they know yeah. you know it's a it's a small thing like we're a very small company where we're we're just us it's our family but i think if you can look at the ripple effect down the line project down the line you can have such a big impact mm-hmm. like yeah. never think that never think that you're too small to make a difference mm-hmm. yeah. you know what i mean yeah or that you can't do something because you can mm-hmm. you can yeah yeah and it like you say it comes down to education yeah and like teaching people yeah it makes me think of that uh the quote uh give a man a house he sleeps for a night mm. teach a man to buy a house he sleeps for a lifetime yeah yeah, yeah. yeah classic quote yeah. yeah we hear it all the time <laughs> <It's> so true <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it makes me think of that yeah. really because <laughs> That's that's what it's that's what's gonna change the future of Hawaii. Totally, is yeah. the education because financial literacy is like oh my god, none of us grew up with it. No, no. no if anything, yeah. we didn't talk yeah. about money. Never okay. shame, shame. talking about money. Yeah. You know yes. what I mean? How dare you talk about how mm-hmm. much money you made or what you're doing? That's shameful. Mm-hmm. You being high makamak. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like 
but let's change that mm -hmm. because what if it was a normal part of life where our relationship to money was healthier and it was a normal conversation where it's like, yes, I made this money. This mm -hmm. is what I'm doing with yeah. it. This is how I'm growing it. And this it is how you invest it. Yeah. This is how you budget it. The, oh like just to have those tools would be game changer if we grew up with them. Imagine you know what I mean? though, people's relationships with money would be different. So then therefore they live more abundantly because mm -hmm. they believe in the abundance of money. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and I think it depends on the person how they react to certain things. Because it's like you could say, "Oh, I just made twenty thousand dollars last month." Mm -hmm. I could be like, "Wow, that's so inspiring. That's so cool. Motivates yeah. me. Yeah, encourages me to yep. want to make that much." Or you could have somebody who's like, "Oh, you made twenty thousand dollars. Like, oh wow, good, good for you." If you are like, they get jealous. You yeah. Know? So there's like, totally. there's two different sides of yeah. it. So it's it's really how how you view that and your perspective of yeah. that. And yeah. I think that's the thing I love about um, our community. And I'm always thinking community over competition mm -hmm. whether that's with podcast businesses all of it like nobody like what somebody else is doing doesn't take away from what you're doing no at all no. Yeah. like yes maybe say you create a, a t-shirt business this person creates a t-shirt business like maybe that's like competition yeah. but there's still space enough for both, for both. and that's exactly that. yeah. what we preach i'm telling you is mm -hmm. like abundance and collaboration mm -hmm. but like that is aloha yeah abundance and collaboration mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So um, one thing that I want to ask you too, because mm -hmm. this is like probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest issue in Hawaii is the housing crisis. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is like the last thing we'll talk about on housing. Um, so do you think that will ever end? <laughs> like just honestly, like is that, is it, is it, to the point where it's so bad, it won't get better. And it's on us to just not victimize ourselves. Like you mentioned in the beginning, because we have a lot of people like, mm. I can't buy a house because mm. of this and that. Or like, yeah. it wasn't given to me because, you know, yeah. Yeah. my family this, my family that. I, I, There's a lot of entitlement, if I'm being real. Yeah. Totally. A lot of entitlement like, oh yeah, I, I don't have this because it, we were overthrown. Like, mm -hmm. okay, we yeah. get yeah, it. Yeah, like. Yeah. I love our people. We complain a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, that's, totally. the, that's the reality that's of it. And reality. I'll be the first one to say that. Yeah. yeah. And we um, agree with everything yeah. that you just said. Um, but what's the solution? Yeah. I think it's a m very layered and multifaceted solution. Mm -hmm. And I'll never say it's too far gone because I just believe in abundance and change can occur no matter how far down the hole you are. So I don't want to say that, but it's going to take a lot but I think it can't just be, oh, it's this is the answer to the housing crisis. It has to be so many different things mm -hmm. working together. And we're just going to come from our perspective of like, you know, they're pushing this, these sky rises as a solution to affordable housing. What about the vacant houses that are sitting there for years on mm -hmm. end that are nobody's living in them and they are just falling to pieces and disheveled and dismantled what if we brought those back into inventory for lo local families don't all want to live in high rises mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so i think there's a component there i think there needs to be reform in dpp i think there needs to be favorable taxes for local people that actually live here and, and higher taxes for people not from here and yeah. higher ta exactly yeah. and yeah. higher taxes for people that mm -hmm. aren't from here mm -hmm. or that are buying here mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i mean there's so many so many things i, yeah. I think it's a two-prong approach i think the first thing you have to do is not be a victim Absolutely. that it has to start it there. has to start mm -hmm. there it has to be you willing to do something yeah. and to to change that current situation and i'm not saying that that it's fair in any way. I, I know I keep going back to that. I think that we're up against it for sure. Mm -hmm. But you can't, if you sit there and just say the same thing over and over and over, you will stay in the exact same spot. And so we're the Nothing generations behind you. Is going to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's the first step there. And then there's all kinds of other things um, th that we talked about, right? The the zoning laws are crazy here in Hawaii. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, relaxing some of those will increase the supply. This is a thing. The prices will constantly go up as long as there's a crazy demand for houses in Hawaii 
and a limited supply. Our island is not growing anymore, right? We only have a limited resource. And so, and there's a very high demand. I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that most of the transactions on Oahu are locals yeah. mm -hmm. that are doing that. It's yeah. not a ton of foreign Outside influence. There are yeah. some, but we have to be able to figure out ways to increase supply in a thoughtful, tactful um, way, right? Uh, and that will help bring the prices down. But I, I can't predict the future, but what I, what I do feel and know is that the prices are just going to continue to go up. Yeah. Um, I think for us in our specific situation is we want to do our little part to keep as many locals home. And what I also realize is that the way to enact change is by growing a community and from a place of power. Yes. Right. Yes. And this is what we are. This is the, the system that I'm in right now. I am going to keep as many local families home as I can mm -hmm. while I grow to a place where I can meet the people I need to meet yeah. and get into the rooms that I mm -hmm. need to get yeah. into to make some change, right. to enact some change. I'm not going to be able to do that from, a place from my like, bedroom yeah. complaining about stuff. Yeah. I can't. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. It. it and, it's a constant struggle, man. And, you know what yeah. I really am passionate about or want to figure out is how to get those local people that e we've even sold homes to um, feeling empowered enough to speak out on how mm -hmm. they actually were able to achieve home ownership. Mm -hmm. Because instead of locals can't afford that, what about the ones that are mm -hmm. right now? I, I know them. I've sold homes to yeah. them, born and bred. This guy talks about stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, you know what I so, mean about like there are a lot, of, a lot of locals doing big things. Yeah, I don't know. Like I think he mentions like Servco. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like one of the biggest. Yeah, uh, you know? car. Yep. Yeah, Servco, and it's local. Yeah, yeah. You and know it's what just I mean? like a local guy. Or yeah. girl, I don't and know it's what like, it is. and I think it goes yeah. back to culturally, right? We're very mm -hmm. humble mm -hmm. people, so we don't want to talk about it. But then I also, on the other hand, just being a victim of social media. They don't want to deal with the lashback. Yeah. They don't want to mm -hmm. deal with people saying, oh, well, you must have been given that money yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, I want to empower people that are successful here and have figured it out to share. Mm -hmm. Like, and encourage them because you never know who's listening mm -hmm. and who is going to be like, oh my gosh, you did it. I can do it. So mm -hmm. like, what about being priced into paradise? Yeah. What about that. that, you know, cause there are local people here that are doing it mm -hmm. and are successful and are thriving mm -hmm. and they have W2s and they have kids and they're living life and flourishing here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if that's you, share them, <laughs> share them, share them. Yeah. scream it from the rooftops. Like let's, let's, yeah. let's empower local people. Yeah. And I, I think it's beautiful that we have these platforms that we can share yes. stories like that. Exactly. Yes. And a, a lot of people, they don't get the opportunity to share yeah. on a bigger platform. Totally. So mm. totally. yeah, that, that inspires me to find people like that yeah. and yeah. get them on here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Mala for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. What is one thing, and you can have your own answer mm -hmm. each, um, like the number one thing that you're most proud of in your life? After all, all the things that you've done. I'm going to answer. Sure. Uh, we're going to have the same answer. Yeah. I already yeah. know. Being a parent. My kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My kids. There's nothing, you know, my daughter, I'm going to get emotional. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we've had tears shed oh, on this podcast <laughs> many times. My daughter was just <laughs> in her first, um, like, theater performance mm -hmm. where she was singing and, you know, dancing and just seeing this human that is so beautiful and self-confident and creative. And um, it's just beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And it's like, she came from us, obviously mm -hmm. she came from God, but she came from, I birthed her yeah. into this <laughs> world and there's nothing I'm more proud of than, than them. And I don't want to mess them up. Like that's <laughs> the biggest thing. Like I don't want to mess them up. I want them my biggest accomplishment is that they are happy, abundant, kind human beings. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, 
and she's that. You know, they're both that. They're both. Awesome. They're both. Yeah. I mean, the first that. thing that pops into my head are were definitely my kids. But yeah, he said it. Way <laughs> okay, more say elo- something else eloquently. <laughs> than I would have not, said. You have an excuse not to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, but I think for me, because I, I was such a Kolohe kid, and and I did a lot of bad things growing up. Um, went down not the best path in the world. I felt like I let my family down. Mm. You know what I mean. Um, and I have a big family and we're a lot of people know uh, the Kalama family, mm-hmm. especially if you're on the windward side, mm-hmm. um, being able to do what I do now and seeing me come out on the on the other side of that and obviously still working on it. But I've always wanted to make my family proud. Mm-hmm. I think that in. Especially here more than anywhere else. Um, it that means the most to me yeah. right and and so i i can think back to a, a a specific time like my dad is a very successful man and but he doesn't show a lot of emotion or he doesn't tell me it all the time he shows me it in other ways right but him looking at me and telling me he's proud of mm-hmm. what i'm doing mm-hmm. you know what i mean um and that has that sticks with me because of all the baggage that I had and, and just taking that as inspiration to continue to move forward and share with the community that we have, you know, it's, it means everything. Mm. Awesome. Well, I'm proud of you too. (laughs) That was was awesome. Okay. What is one thing you wish people knew about you that they don't? Uh, My social barometer is actually really low. I'm actually In- very introvert. introverted. <laughs> I'm actually very introverted. So after I meet you and I love on you and I enjoy a conversation with you, I actually need to go home and rest. <laughs> okay. Especially after this, this Portuguese can talk. Yeah. <laughs> we love talking. Too, I, don't, so. I don't know. But I've said that so many times. That's so a, people probably know that about me. But yeah, but I don't think you, um, people would notice that from the, the te- uh, no. television show. Yeah. Yeah. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah. No. Yeah. I can put it put it on, and mm-hmm. then I like I like to take it off. Yeah, I'm the same way. I go yeah. home yeah. after this is where I get my socializing. Yeah, yes. work events. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. after that, I just want to stay home. Yeah. Stay home. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. We're home buddies. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You talked about one of them. I think um, yours is a much more uh, deep uh, thing. But what, being introverted. Yes. Um, landscape photography. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that's like a passion of mine and Mm -hmm. not a lot of people know that i do it you can with a little research figure out Mm -hmm. that you do it um but more uh than that is like the creative side Mm -hmm. to what i love i've always i've always felt like the creatives are a very special breed Mm -hmm. you know and i think that growing up everybody has that in them but our system just kind of like takes it out of people yeah. you know what yeah. i mean and and it doesn't allow people to like flourish and and it doesn't tell you that that's a good thing to do right because you can't make money at it mm-hmm. or whatever it is mm-hmm. um but i enjoy that creative side and i think um even a little bit of design that people don't know people that, don't know he's yeah, my designer that i literally <laughs> love design um yeah and he's good at it yeah, but you're being modest. He's good at anything that he does, and it <laughs> yeah. comes to him very, very easy. And he's a very skilled landscape photographer. Awesome. Yeah, I love, love. love yeah. So love even me. like merch, you design all your own merch and stuff. I mean, we have. I now we're not designing mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. I'm not designing it personally, but like, I mean, we are designing it, but we're not actually like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have your input. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have yeah. like cool. ideas. I'm like, yeah, okay. and then you can. Uh, just you, a, you take a picture of your own, build your own photo shoots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep, all the looks, good looks everything yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all our podcast stuff. I said all yeah. of it. Up. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. do you Fun. sell your photography? I yes. do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I plug it. Plug it. When I would come Ohio Kalama <laughs> photography dot com, yeah. um, I for three years I shot every single sunrise. For mm-hmm. three years, yeah. I have. Wow. Uh, I think I've seen commit. three sunrises in the last three years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Commit. He was committed. Yeah. He's a morning person. Where I oh, am okay. not. Yeah. That's another I'm thing. Not. I am not a morning person. Yeah. yeah, but I, I that was like my time of like 
reflection mm. alone. I'm in the water a lot of the times, mm. you know, shooting on the, the east side because. Oh, you do like underwater sunrise. photography too? I have, mm. but mainly I'm up to my like legs mm. in, yeah. in, um, in water and I'm shooting like mm. seascapes. Oh, okay. But, awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I love, I love that whole side. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Let's get to the the moment of truth. The life hack. Oh, we're oh, here. Gosh. We made it. So, what is your life hack? You can go first. Me first. Yeah. In the simplest terms, it's heal. Mm. And healing is is oh man, it takes time, and it looks different for everyone. But I think it's go inward, so then you can go outward. Mm. I think as entrepreneurs only speaking from that perspective or even just human beings in general we like to go outward for answers when every answer you need is within so go in whether and do whatever way that that works for you if it's getting a life coach if it's going to therapy if it's just meditating but like for me it's every single morning starting off with reflection and gratitude and there can be little things that you do that help you connect to self because a lot of the times we go through life and we get m every year that goes by that we're not in tune with who we are and what makes us tick, we get more and more disconnected. And as you're disconnected, anxiety and, and displacement just grows. Mm -hmm. And um, the key is, is, is tuning into mindset. And then I call it emotion set, but it's really being emotionally in tune with with what's going on. Um, but it's healing. Healing is like the key because you don't want to build this empire that you're so proud of and then feel nothing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of successful people go through life and they do that. And that's because they have lost themselves along the way and they, they reach externally for their healing when they need to reach internally. Mm -hmm. So... That's my life hack mm. is to <laughs> heal and do the work to continue to go in mm -hmm. because every answer, every strength is already there. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a great life hack and Mahalo for sharing that. I actually saw this uh, reel, I think it was this morning or yesterday, where they said how healing looks like. Yeah. And it was like this water, but it was like maybe soda or like this dark yeah brown yeah. water and yeah. then they put it under the sink and it just keeps running mm -hmm. and for a while it's just like barely that. turning yeah. and then it, eventually it's like, I'm like clear. that's so yeah. beautiful that's yeah. exactly I thought that how was super it is cool. and yeah. i just yes. saw it so it's funny yes. you bring that up yeah, yeah. Cool. and then i'm um, talking about going inward our um another guest uh, mentioned about like looking how everybody um when we talk about culture cultural yeah. identity and yeah. uh, ethnicity and whatever we're always looking outward mm -hmm. to like for other other um yeah cultures and whatever yeah. for healing or whatever yeah but he said start with yourself start with your own mm. ethnicity start with your own culture yes. and if that doesn't work then you go Love and that. you look for it in other things and yeah. you know he mentioned like and then you go to your crystal or whatever exactly. yeah. but you know he said always start like if you're hawaiian start with that mm -hmm. start with the heat yeah. the going yeah. to a lot you go yeah. into the ocean whatever it is exactly yeah. you know jordan yeah. mentions how like he's Filip he's Filipino. He's a water baby, mm -hmm. probably because his mm -hmm. ancestors were on an island, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. that's why, he like, so like hey, always. Shout out, I'm Filipino okay. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot tell my green eyes, but yeah. I am. <laughs> we can tell you local. Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's funny because like even. So you can tell someone like even my mom's like more holly looking, mm -hmm. and but you can just tell when like somebody's local. Yeah, yeah. And even doesn't matter your skin color. Yeah, yeah. 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 you can just it's like the vibe, the energy, yeah. whatever. I agree. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we're just yeah. bred different here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but okay, what yeah. Is your life so life hack? hack. I we talked a little bit about it earlier, but I think success leaves clues, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are are searching for something more, and I think the the hack that I have and the key to being able to do that is get out of the environment you're in. Mm -hmm. um, surround yourself with people that have a life that you strive to have. You know what I mean? I think it's just so important. We talked about the sphere thing, but you got to be able to break through it. If you want something more, you need to be with something 
people that are more, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. people that are doing what you want to do. Um, and and even to take it a little further, I think a lot of people don't even realize like what their purpose is or what they're looking for, uh, what they admire, right? So I like a, a, an exercise. So I want everybody to do this. Um, and it's really like to figure out what values you hold true mm. to then know what kind of people you should be around yeah. and and put yourself around and attract, mm-hmm. and yeah. attract right? Mm-hmm. Like you have to know yourself before you can mm-hmm. can go out and do all of that stuff. And um, it starts to know, it starts with what values you hold dear to yourself. And I've asked this to a lot of people and they have to think about it. They're like, um, you know, they, they don't really know. So I always tell them, think of, the three people in the world that inspire you the most, mm. any three people. Um, and then ask yourself, what commonalities do those three people have that are inspiring? And and a lot of times it's gonna be like, okay, they're they're um they're honest people, they're compassion people, they're compassionate people, they're hardworking people. Um, all of the things that go across all three of those people, those qualities, those are your qualities. Mm -hmm. Those are the qualities that you hold dear. Now go out into the world and find those qualities in people that you admire Mm -hmm. and surround yourself with those people. Yeah. 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 Actually do it, people. Actually do (laughs) Do it. it. Because your life will change. Yeah. Big time. It really, really will. Yeah. I'm such a big fan of you too. Uh, <laughs> you. Dude, this is you guys are such a great couple. And like right high on. high EQ. Yeah. Work, good work, <laughs> ethic. You. Like I, I hope people are like this is like couple goals right here. Couple goals. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag. Hashtag. Hashtag couple goals with a Z, <laughs> yeah. not an S. With a Z. <laughs> yeah. Well, mahalo for sharing both great life hacks yeah. and great insight. Thanks. Okay, so we just have our last fast fave five questions. Okay. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry, I forgot. Um, mm. what are your, what are your future goals? Like, what what's mm. what's the five, ten, twenty year plan? Oh, wow, there's so much on yeah. the horizon. <laughs> Season two. <laughs> <laughs> Season um, two. Yeah. I mean, we didn't get into it to just do it one and done. You mm-hmm. know, like I I don't think we're done yet. There, Not. we'll see what happens. But I think that would be something that would be on the horizon. I think that should keep perpetuating as as authentically as it can. We have a lot of things that we're working on, honestly. Um, we're starting it. We did start a business with my brother and my sister-in-law because so many times we got asked, like, can you come renovate my house? Renovate and my not, kitchen. And that's, not what, we, my house. that's yeah. not what we did, you know, because we were just on the investing side. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like, why do we keep saying no? Like, let's say yes. So we want to be able to provide that kind of service mm-hmm. for um, local families that want to elevate their spaces. So Perfect. Design, I can hire you then. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. design build stuff. So that's that's happening. It's okay. current. Um, and then we just want to keep growing deals in Allah, mm-hmm. our community. Um, I, I feel like we're being called to educate. Um, because again, every time we have to go get education, we're going to the mainland to get it mm-hmm. because there's not a lot here. There are some recently, like a lot of our friends are doing it. So, but it, it'd be cool to be able to offer that from our perspective. Um, education for sure is something we're working on um eventually i don't think we'll ever stop flipping but mm-hmm. doing it just for fun mm-hmm. i think would be yeah not because we have to, not but a necessity yeah, yeah not a necessity will be will be a goal for growing sure. a podcast for sure we growing enjoy the doing that there's yeah, something yeah. special about being able to sit yeah. down with yeah. someone for yeah. an extended period of time um, and then you get to be with people that you don't normally would have maybe been with, you yeah. know, it, it opens doors. It yeah. does, but it's funny because after you sit down with them, maybe you thought that, um, before, but then you're like, dude, these are, this is like my people. Like yeah. they, they talk the you, same you way I talk, know. they think the yeah. same way yeah. I think, yeah. you know? Um, um yeah. but I think too, bringing, a a bigger presence to Hawaii. So like doing stuff in Hawaii where, um, the people of Hawaii can see, you know, maybe a speaker entrepreneur yeah. from the mainland come here, mm-hmm. like a bigger event. You yeah. know what I mean? Because um, we fly up to those and they're game changing and they're so motivational, mm-hmm. but like, no, let's bring them here. Yeah. Let's bring them here, you know? Um, and then holding bigger events that 
I think can impact more for like super cheap or mm-hmm. something, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. People can cool. learn how to buy a home for the first time yeah. or, mm-hmm. you know, but have all the resources together in one space. So, yeah. 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 Cool. All kinds of things. Just, I love that. I mean, we yeah. can get more like multifamily yeah, yeah, yeah. and like all kinds of stuff, but. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We'll yeah. Do a, uh, one day we'll do a, a Dios and Keep It Aloha collab. Oh, yeah. Yes. Let's do <laughs> that. That'd be, That'd be so Brains- fun. Brainstorm one. See what yeah, that looks like. That'd be so fun. <laughs> Yeah, right now we have, uh, I've mentioned this so many times on the podcast and we never actually did it, but we were actually planning our podcast party Ooh. with all the past podcast guests. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's going to bring everybody back That'd together. So One space is going to be like the sickest networking that event, so yeah. Met Gala yeah. type yeah. event. So stay tuned. Uh, Not you guys, sorry. Well, Tony. Ours, <laughs> guest well, only. Guest our, only. RSVP yeah. already. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> we're in for sure. Awesome. Okay, now we'll get to the last Fast Fate 5 question. Okay. okay. Uh, favorite childhood snack? Oh my gosh! If, if you can't think of any favorite snack while working, like what's your go-to? I automatically go to Chico sticks. Do you Chico, guys remember? Chico, Chico sticks. <laughs> what is Chico's? I go to Chico sticks and musubi. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, wait, what is Chico Musubi. sticks? I've never Chico heard sticks, of that. Chico sticks, you get them from 7 Eleven. They're like orange um, on the outside with like coconut flakes and then it's like peanut butter in the middle. Kind of like the Pockies or? No. Uh. No, I'll go find them and I'll send them. And, and, and okay. I apologize if that's not what they're called. <laughs> no, it's, no, they're I'm, called Chico sticks. I know what you're you know talking what about. Like, but I don't know how to describe them? them. Yeah. Yeah, those were like the jam. They're individually wrapped. Yeah, yes. they're individually okay, wrapped. Okay, and they're no, kind of like they're thick kinda like, and long. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, whoa. <laughs> are we talking about uh, easy. something else? Yeah. Easy. Listen, they're about this big. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, they're they're called cheese. We're, we're talking about like snacks, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Snacks. Been- <laughs> 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 yeah. And you can never go wrong with a good musubi because my parents used to work late nights, and we would, me and my brother would always be at Seven Eleven just. Because the 7 Eleven is right next door to their office. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yes. Yeah. We love a 7 Eleven next to where we work. Kalihi? There's one not far from here. Right yeah. Down there. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was yours? Uh, cool Ranch Doritos for sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's his yeah. jam. <laughs> the, the simple one. Yeah. Cool yeah. Ranch. Anybody for the dried salmon, you mush up. And yeah. You yeah. Just eat them. Or to put in the Ziploc bag. Ziploc that was bag, a thing. Yeah. I was you. just doing yeah. it last night. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite way to celebrate? Travel. Yeah. I know you and I just normally like go out to a lunch or a dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but we love to travel. Mm. Love to travel. And I feel like that's the best way to kind of disconnect, enjoy the fruits of your labor and make memories. Do you travel with your kids? Or yeah. okay. So with both, kids. both. Okay, okay. Both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um they're old enough where you can leave them. Yes. Yeah. So they're seven and five now. So and luckily, like we can't do anything we do without family mm-hmm. my mom is so helpful so they're normally with her mm-hmm. but it's so fun to travel with kids too yeah. as long as yeah. you're going to kid-friendly places yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and but, when they get to a certain age yeah. it's yeah. not super fun to travel with infants. in the beginning yeah, no, yeah i could see not. that yeah but yeah we love to travel and music dude uh-huh. any like, concerts and stuff it's, nice. it's hard to think about because i think for entrepreneurs especially it's really difficult we don't celebrate enough. our wins mm-hmm. enough because you know there's so mean? many. <laughs> you can't keep up. <laughs> oh, well, that's Too many a, celebrations. Wow, you just that's keep pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Keep pushing the yeah. goalposts. You like get somewhere yeah. and it's like, like what's next? Okay, what's yeah. next? Yeah. Yeah. What's next? Yeah. And we don't take the time to do it. But I think um yes, definitely travel, mm-hmm. but family get togethers. Yeah. I yeah. think that, that means the most. And that, for that sure. happens all the time. And it's like, I don't know if that happens everywhere. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But it's it's weekly in our household. Yeah. Yeah. I love that we have that here. Yeah. Yeah. Here and I know Jersey. Jersey. Jersey for they sure. all got their, their <laughs> Sunday dinners or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, speaking of the travel destination, favorite vacation destination? There's so many uncovered that I need to. I well, there's a ton them. I want to go to, but we, uh, I love Park City, Utah. Yeah. Um, and I. Snowboarding? It's snowboarding. Yes. Yeah. We go every year and I never get, never gets old. Like yeah, ever was, gets old. It never does. But you've got to hit fun. Japan then for that. I know. I know that's yeah. why we want to go. Yeah. We want to go so badly. I, I think know. we're thinking about Christmas this year. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, anywhere with snow for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's fine just because we don't have it here. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. And are you surfers too? I, when I was young, I haven't yeah. done it in like 20 years. Yeah. Just growing up. 
Okay. Yeah. But so it's snowboarding, it, you can, I ski. you know. Yeah. Oh, ski. I'm okay. Skier. I'm a snowboarder. I know. Yeah. I know. Next question. <laughs> yeah. Let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were so cool into that. We'll edit that out. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Ski, I'm sure if I skied, I would enjoy it. Mm. You would. Yeah. It's, it's fun. So fun. Just yeah, being it, on snow is fun. It's yeah. just the, the the stigma of like snowboarding to cooler. Just because it's, it's way cooler. It looks way so cooler. Much cooler. It looks way cooler. Yeah. I'm, I just learned how to ski in, at, later in mm-hmm. life. And then I never went to snowboarding and yeah, I'm yeah. scared because I've just heard horror stories. You get hurt a lot. <laughs> yeah. And you're only up there for like two weeks. You don't want to get hurt yeah, and not be exactly. able to have fun. The worst is getting hurt on the first day and on then the your trip is day. ruined. And trust I've me, had friends that, that would happen that. to yeah. me. Yeah. This yeah. is my last snowboarding trip in uh, Canada. Somebody I think my, my friend's wife, she broke her arm, I think oh, maybe man. the third day or something. Yeah. Where'd you guys yeah. go to Black Home? Yeah. 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 Whistler. Sick. Yeah. So cool. yeah. See, I'll just stick with skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> okay, favorite date activity? Just a good restaurant. Yeah. Or okay. foodies. Well, what, what's, the, what's the restaurant? What's the recommendation? Oh, God, there's so many. L- listen, we're a sucker for Asagios. Oh, yeah. Which one? Kailua. One. Kailua. Okay, Kailua. Yeah. I never rented a Kailua one, but there's salad. Yeah. The yeah. Caesar salad. Caesar salad is like nowhere yeah. else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still haven't eaten a Caesar salad and then that even compares. The chicken asagio with mm-hmm. the chicken and the, with potatoes. So, gotta get the oh, potatoes. No, 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 potatoes. My brother used to work at Asagio's oh, really? for like years. So, he, yeah. he knows all the orders. Yeah. 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 And uh, movies. I, oh, I the movies. absolutely yeah. love the movies. Mm-hmm. And Same. there's something about popcorn at mm-hmm. the movie, movie theater. theater yeah. I work, used to work is. at the theater. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Nothing like that it. That is, yeah. cannot compare, you know? So mm-hmm. um, just snuggling up with a good movie, it's yeah. like, yeah. It's We're unreal. very simple. Yeah. Very simple. I mean, don't go so, out, don't party. Sounds like, like we'll go to a, yeah. a dinner yeah. here and there, like an event. But yeah. like, I mean, I don't drink. She doesn't no. drink. We're so homebodies. Yeah, and- we... Family work really hard. Yeah, um, time with the kids and then the kids, travel. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's like sounds like my future minus the kids. <laughs> 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 okay, last one. Favorite thing about each other? Oh my god! <laughs> Let's get gushy here. Let's get gushy. I already have mine. <laughs> it's your heart. Oh my mm-hmm. heart! Yeah, <laughs> you're. He's the kindest most thoughtful person i've ever met so he's always thinking of other people he can make anybody feel comfortable and welcome and um you just feel he's like a warm blanket as you know he's a six four mm-hmm. big hawaiian guy that is can be intimidating to a lot of people but to me he's just a warm blanket those people are always the nicest to, to what we we said before we've had like kalihua krug on yeah guy yeah. with a tattoo six something yeah, yeah. gentle nice. giant yeah. Yeah. yeah you know it's it's your heart mm-hmm. you are the most kind gentle thoughtful person i've ever met mm. Thank you. <laughs> you took all the good things yeah. right there. No, um, no. Again, it's good, so you don't have to say that back. Cause... I know. I know. <laughs> He's not gonna say that. No. <laughs> I mean, uh, aside from all of those things that oh. you know, you are. Mm. I admire and am grateful for your drive, mm. almost more than anything else, mm. um, because I I couldn't be doing this with any other person i know that for sure and i and i see outside and we we talk to a lot of other couples that try to work together or um and and struggle it's like really Mm. really hard to do business and um have a personal relationship Mm. with someone it is uh and so you're I, i don't think i've ever met anyone that dreams as big Mm -hmm. and has as much vision um, and as much willingness for punishment mm-hmm. as I as I have, you know, um, yeah. So I don't know, man. I think I think that's that's I'll, it. I'll take it. Man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, if she's really um, into the punishment, then you should try snowboarding. <laughs> that's true. I'll let my kids try it. Yeah, and I'll keep up with them on my skis. 
<laughs> okay. Well, that's all we have for today. I just want to say mahalo to the both of you for coming out and talking stories with us. Is there anything you want to say to the audience before we wrap up? If not, let us know where we can find you. You can find us on all social media platforms at Kamohai and Tristan. And we just appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much story with us. for having yeah, us cool. on. Yeah. yeah, we're honored to be here and yeah. just want to add as much value <laughs> to as many people as we can. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, Absolutely. You're doing a great job at that. Yeah. And thank you. You you both were on my radar. So I just, I like kind of like look for people on social media. So you're on my radar. But thank you to my sister for pushing it. Yeah. yeah. And thank you, sister. The, the time you worked out with the show and it everything. Did. Yeah, it was it perfect. And the, the yeah. season perfect. finale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Thanks, Lay. Like, because yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. Oh, <laughs> right, right on. on. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, so mahalo, Kamohai, and Tristan for joining us on the Keep It Low podcast. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. We have new episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamak. I remember to always keep it aloha.